Hello and welcome back to Dimension 20 Live presents <laughs> Fantasy High Sophomore Year. I'm your humble Dungeon Master, Brennan Lee Mulligan. With me as always are our intrepid heroes. Say hi, intrepid heroes. Hi, hi intrepid, intrepid heroes. heroes. Oh gosh, it's so lovely to have you back. Uh, this is Dropout's weekly game of D&D. We're here continuing the story of the Bad Kids, a group of adventurers from the Eggfort Adventuring Academy in the town of Elmville. Kind of modern 1980s-esque teen group that uh, goes out into the world of Spire beyond the borders of Solace on wild adventures. For uh, their spring break and 60% of their sophomore year grade, the bad kids have been sent out to retrieve the crown of the Nightmare King. They find themselves uh, outside the hotel, sorry, inside a fancy restaurant in Bastion City called the Swan's Little Parade. Uh, and as they are here in the Swan's Little Parade, uh, they have just dealt with the recovery of their captured friends, Riz and Fig, uh, who they got back from the clutch of some demons. Uh, you guys stole a guest book. You guys got your friends back. You made out with the chief of police, disguised. Uh -huh. did I, by the way, did I get his name? Uh, can you give me a quick intelligence check to see if you spotted his name? Anyone want to give me a help action? Sure. Yes, yes! <laughs> Did you say intelligence? Uh, uh, intelligence, yes. 15! Uh, police Commissioner Runtz Buggins. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's so hot. That Commissioner wow, that's Runtz so Buggins. Cool. You always know how to pick them. <laughs> you certainly do. Uh, however, we're not there right now. We're actually over uh, at the Swan's Little Parade. Um, and the Swan's Little Parade is an extremely fancy, well-to-do dining establishment. The waitstaff dance out with various foie gras and lovely little caviars. Uh, and we see that uh, here at the dining table, uh, you know, Gleer is recovering from his, I would say near-death experience, but it's actually just a full death experience. <laughs> and coming back to life. Coming, and coming back to life. Uh, we also uh, have discovered that Rog, Bark Rock, is terrified sees something in the photograph. Um, Tracker has offered to do some kind of magic to hopefully help him and prevent whatever weird situation would occur here. Um, and we also have just received a text message, Gorgug on his phone, oh. from Zelda Donovan, his girlfriend, asking if he left Elmville without saying goodbye. The dog house. <laughs> you know, Gorgog, do you know what I think will get you out of the dog house? What? If we write her a really good song. I don't, I, I probably should. Don't talk to her until you finish the song. Yeah. Yeah. I don't don't spend a lot of time respond. on the song and make it perfect. Yeah. Shouldn't I just turn no. off your red Reach receipts? Out? No. <laughs> My red receipts are off. No, no, no. What, is no. he a dealer? <laughs> Um, I think Gorgug, I like that idea, is just going to call Zelda. Uh, just at the table? Yeah. <laughs> Good, uh, this is the way we should I do mean, things. I, I don't want to ask everyone to move, it's a booth, right? <laughs> no, you're right, there's no booths here. It's like lovely, like little banquet tables. There's, um, uh, Super loud here, <laughs> Can everyone be quiet for a second? Um, uh, you see, as you do that, the maitre d' just appears next to you as the phone starts ringing and says, uh, Monsieur Dauphin, if you can uh, destroy your phone. Destroy it? Can I cast suggestion on him <laughs> to allow this to happen? <laughs> what does, uh, what does Fig say? If we get killed by the staff of if the we Swan's have Little to Parade, fight to you. Um, total party oh, kill. I suggest, okay, it's, um, phones are allowed now. <laughs> Um, he looks, you have never felt a spell of yours more powerfully rebuffed before. <laughs> he, he says, um, excuse me, please uh, also do not cast a spell on me. Um, this is fun. You cannot uh, make a call as a table. Monsieur, okay. uh, I'm sorry. This, these people are commoners, poor folk who've just recently come into wealth. They're not I'm accustomed to loaded. our, well, you're uh, super loaded now, all right? But you haven't been super loaded for as long as some of us have. <laughs> uh, it is all right. We would like to brush the uh, the gentleman just to make sure everything is all right. You brush him? Just brush him. <laughs> and of course, they're going to brush you. About five waiters come over with small <laughs> white feather dusters. And is just this kind a rich of, thing? This is a thing, yes, this, this is, is very much a rich thing. Do I, 
Did I haven't heard anything about looking dirty. Do I look dirtier Are than they You made a phone call in the restaurant, so we just want to brush you to be sure. To, to make sure, for fingerprints? Exactly. <laughs> for fingerprints? No, I mean, I did not hear what you said, what? For fingerprints. No. <laughs> just step outside. Should I go outside? Is that, do you okay. Have, do you have a phone area? Uh, we, we have a phone area. It is downtown. It is a different a place. Minutes drive. And just, just to make sure. Outside. Okay, uh, I will leave. My parents always made a big deal of stressing that we were upper middle class, and I feel like that was a lie for a long time. <laughs> we Sometimes. ate hot dogs with cheese in them when it was my birthday. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you were wrecking class. That's, that's pretty fine. far. That's I've pretty never far. seen a brush like that before, and now that's all I want to buy. Oh. No, you can you brush you yourself? Buy it. You just have to inherit it. No. That's. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you mentioned that you have never seen one of these brushes before? No, but I... I it's all right, we would like to just brush Ryan, you. Ryan, they're going to brush you! No, no, I love it! Uh, embrace the brush. I love okay. it, this, this is This is one of the best things about money. At this point, my, my curiosity has peaked. Please brush me. <laughs> you are asking to be brushed? Please brush my friend. <sighs> I'm afraid we are going to need to hose you down. <laughs> oh my god! Nothing that has happened. We don't do it in the restaurant. You're going to have to come in back of the kitchen. Oh my gosh, it's like in prison. You know, after everything that happened, I do feel dirty. So yeah, let's go do this. Uh, you see that Galier looks and says, I was a diplomat for the open people for some time. This is a level of wealth. Is that, that true? What? Yeah, Galier, I've always wanted to know you more about diplomat? your past. Yeah, I mentioned it before. Uh, uh, yes, I was. I worked. Remember when I was applying for the guidance counselor position that ended up going to. <laughs> jo job you were going to be a guidance counselor. I, yeah. I, I was trying to get Those hooked up the with the guidance jobs, counselor yeah. job. Yeah. But that then, in a twist of fate, possibly it shows you how life knows better. You mm -hmm. became the. <laughs> And you were the lunch lad? And then the vice principal. So what did you good. think, Kristen? Where were you? Yeah. <laughs> I, th I thought you looked familiar. That's why I was so glad you were our intern. Uh, you just you thought you didn't know him at this, all? This, this, this does, does not really, represent how any of us... I really thought. That's crazy. You know, I want to get to know you more, man. We have spent... <laughs> An amount of time to, I, I mean, truly a tremendous Glare, amount of time. Glare, have you considered the takes a money. lap around the building. <laughs> can, I, can I palm some money to someone to brush down Glare? What is everyone doing? I'm outside. You're outside. <laughs> Gorga, you are outside by yourself. Um, uh, you, as you go outside, uh, you basically, you know, the phone starts ringing. Um, as it does, um, Rings once, twice, three times. And then she picks up. Fourth time. And then she picks Hi, up. Hi, this is Zelda Donovan. Hi, Thanks Zelda. so much for giving me a call. Oh. Ooh. This is a message. All you have to do is leave your name and number, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much. Beep. Uh, hey, Zelda. It's it's me, Gorgug. I um. I was just calling because I I freaking messed up and there is a lot going on. Fig and uh, and Riz got kind of taken or something and, and we had to leave town real fast. And, but that's not really a good excuse. And but yeah, I'm gone. We're in um, uh, we're out of town and uh, what's it called? Uh, Bastion City. We're in Bastion City. Um, call me back when you can or I'll, I'll try you later. I'm really sorry. Bye. Goodbye. I hope you have a good day. Goodbye. <laughs> Mailed it, dude. It's definitely nine time. Um, good night. Uh, does Gorgug immediately come back in or no? Uh, what's around here? <laughs> it's sort of an empty street and there's a fancy little restaurant, so it's a very upscale kind of neighborhood. There's a few little restaurants around, but you know, there's also some sort of like fancy sort of uh, townhouses and things like that in Bastion City. Um, Maybe Gorga just was a little bit on a walk for, just to clear his head and see if he, it feels like, he, I think he thinks he wants to call her again, but that seems crazy as well. Mm -hmm. So he's just like, 
Just walking. Uh, you go on a little walk around the corner. Um, it's too real. <laughs> so like, I feel like I've been in this position. Are you crying? A little bit. <laughs> Stop. Uh. Um, cool. I think, um, it, I, I think if I see Gorgug walk away just because people have been captured recently, I might sneak out and just kind of watch him from a distance. I was going to say that I would like to maybe uh, send, leave a note at the police station, so I might have also been prowling about. Okay, um, you go take a look uh, uh, at the police station. Um, uh, oh, but I don't want to, I'm just saying like, I might be sneaking out while Gorg While is, Gorg is there. Yeah. Cool, um, each of, go ahead and give me a stealth roll real quick. 19. Okay, I'm gonna need a perception from Riz and Fig. Yikes. Oh, I see. Okay. Is there a roll to order more foie gras? For you, Mr. Seacaster, there's yeah. no roll oh, to oh. order more foie gras. <laughs> 10, I can't assume. Seven. Seven. Uh, I'm gonna roll back here as well, real quick. Okay. Uh, Gorga, you head off on your own. Um, so uh, you guys finish eating here. As the meal sort of wrapping up, um, uh, you see Sandra Lynn looks around a little while. You leave to go to the police station? Um, actually, I'll probably wait till we go to bed. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, uh, as you guys are hanging out here, uh, you know, right after Gorgon kind of goes for a walk, Sandra Lynn looks up and says, all right, well, we'll have whatever Tracker's going to do tonight, but... Uh, what's the plan after that, gang? Jailbreak, right? Yeah. Well, not necessarily well, a jailbreak. We should talk to her. I, she's... Why do why do why is it that we think that she specifically will have information? I think we know that this thing's in Falinel, and that we know that uh, the uh, Shadow Cat was an agent of Falinel. Why does that mean Aelwyn? I don't see how Aelwyn is in any way connected to. I any think of your this. family might be involved. Well, I would rather talk to my my parents than to. Do you know where they are? No. I so. feel like the ball's <laughs> making a great point right here. Well, I'm saying no jailbreak. I'm saying we speak to her. Why don't we look in this hotel book? Okay. And, yes. and see what's going on there. Uh, great. Give me uh, uh, anyone that wants to check that out. Give me an investigation check. Can I have Boggy? Yes, absolutely. Does anyone want to help me? I have good investigation. Yeah, yeah. I'll help okay, you. sweet. Thank you. Ooh, hell yeah. I, I got a 25. 25. Hey. 25. I got a 27. Damn. Hell yeah. I thought I was going to contribute. Um, uh, <laughs> I thought I would you have held a, this is really the, effectively. Thank you, everyone. Fabian, with the contribute. Um, Fabian, I'm going to say that the 18 has to do with. Oh, that. hell yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say that 18 has to do with the fact that as you're going along, you guys are uh, moseying. Um, in the sort of registry that you guys have stolen from the Hotel Cavalier, uh, you have to go months and months and months back. Uh, you see your father's signature. Oh, hmm. my papa stayed here. Uh, not only do you see that, as you guys go and look back, um, Bill Seacaster's signature is here in the hotel book several times. Huh. Look at that, my papa. <laughs> this is not um, good, Fabian. What? No, I mean, it just it, I, is. It, what do you mean? It's. I well, mean, it's not bad. It Where was did sort he of stay? a den of criminals, and M Mr. Seacaster. <laughs> Have we ever said Mr. Seacaster? I don't think that Captain feels like Seacaster. that. Really felt new and weird. <laughs> weird. Uh, Professor Seacaster was a criminal. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Seacaster was a criminal. Are there? Is there any name in conjunction with? Like, are we seeing it in tandem with another right. name? What, what As you look for that that specific question, uh, literally that specific question, there is a name that appears in the room prior to his stay for every one of his stays. Dang. Um, and that name is Garty O'Brien. Garty is spelled G-A-R-T-H-Y. <laughs> That's for real. Uh, Garty O'Brien. Can I Google Garty O'Brien? Do I have any uh, knowledge of this person familiar-wise? Roll a charisma, like roll a... Um, yeah, roll flat charisma with advantage. Uh, it's gonna be 15. Uh, 
Guardy O'Brien will not probably be uh, findable on a Salesian search engine because Guardy O'Brien is not Salesian. You know that he lives out on the wide open sea. This is another pirate. Oh, but we're in a seaport, right? You are. Cathilda, have you met Guardy O'Brien? Do you know Taylor? Uh, uh, she looks and says, uh, hold on one second. Uh, oh, right. Uh, well, uh, Miss Fig, uh, I, uh, Guardy O'Brien, I know them quite Mrs. well. Mrs. What's that? Them. Mrs. Fig. Them, yes, I know them quite well. <laughs> uh, Guardy is, um, well, they're a, uh, how do I put this, a pirate, mm -hmm. uh, and they run uh, the Gold Gardens, which are a series of um, houses of fortune and pleasure in Leviathan. Oh! <laughs> okay, I will go to a casino over a jail. I don't think it's a casino, I think it's a whole house. Well, well maybe I mean, anytime like... you have sex with a, you know, it could be a gamble, right? <laughs> and you always you might yeah, lose your heart. <laughs> How much experience do you have? Is this your Netflix what? special? <laughs> what happened to you? You I'm can't told. say anything anymore. What happened to me was I let some walls down. Okay. No, you. No, all right. <laughs> Leviathan. Is that what you said? Oh yes, uh, Leviathan. Lions. It's like uh, my me and Papa used to go there sometimes. It's uh, this incredible pirate fortress that sails the seas, and it's like a bunch of ships that like smash together. It's Honestly, the coolest place in like the whole world. Huh. Uh, and I'm total, I could like totally get us in because you know, my dad is like a big shot there. Okay. Or was a big shot so, before he, I killed him. Hmm? Okay. It's honestly so cool though. It's uh, like, like it's and I would like, totally love to go. Like dinner theater? No, 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 no. It's like a, we're talking like a city sized place made up of ships that have all kind of like broken wreckages of ships that have all been kind of put together. Uh, and you know, uh, they've, they've kind of built a city on top of this floating mass. And it's kind of like a pirate like haven or like. It sounds like, like spring break. I'm not here, but. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like spring break. Sounds like spring break. Uh, I Whoa, don't know okay. what oh. that is a reference to, but yes. <laughs> it sounds like the go. trash island off the coast of Texas. I uh, don't know any of those specifics, but yes. <laughs> uh, uh, but what did we find in this hotel book? Um, in this hotel, well, that's what you guys found, is oh, this okay, clue about mm -hmm. the fact. Uh, the months that you see there line up for the several months at the end of your freshman year oh, when, you, okay. when you guys were largely in jail and a little bit before that mm -hmm. uh, this was during the time when you know that Bill Seacaster was supplying palimpsests to KBX Bank mm. ah. mm. interesting do you think maybe this is how they got all the rubies <coughs> that are in that bag that you oh, have maybe it's interesting why is, would do we, is this guy got Gatti O'Brien anywhere else in the hotel book or only in relation to Bill Seacaster only in the room that Bill Seacaster was staying in directly before he was so okay. why do you say after Bill Seacaster they wouldn't be able to meet staying. with Bill Seacaster you know it's strange that one of them couldn't just check in they couldn't meet why did well, they why might couldn't Guardi check but why out couldn't, check in are usually you're leaving different. something in the room yeah. and then he you yeah, but, right, but why can't why can't Guardi O'Brien just talk to Bill Seacaster? Well, because because that would implicate criminal them. activity. It's like a drop, the ball. Yeah. You know, it's like Gotti goes in. But they're both like leaves a thing. Everyone knew they're both pirates. No, because uh, Bill Seacaster, once you become uh, a citizen of Solace, Got they it. forgive all of your uh, right. former crimes. Right. So he's. He was living, pretending that he was uh, done and reformed. Right. Also, not to accuse everyone's parents of crimes today, Please. but um, Bill Seacaster is in hell, right? Oh, big time. And mm -hmm. we just fought a bunch of devils. Oh. Demons. They were oh, demons. Oh, yeah, demons are different from devils. Okay. They were oh, demons, yeah. not I devils. Got it. Never mind. Can I see the ruby that, you're, that you got? Yeah, I take it out. And this is my other guy. And this looks crazy right yes the ruby is almost jet black with this roiling kind of storm cloud within it you can see sort of billowing of smoke with do we think it's cursed i mean you oh. eyeing it you would say almost definitely because i have remove curse that i could try to cast on yeah. this um Anything. okay yeah i give me a religion check as you look at it 
Okay, cool. You do that with advantage, yeah. right, already? Yeah, okay. my book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, 19. As you look at the curse on the thing, um, and you be begin to cast the beginnings of Remove Curse on it, you see that there is a powerful contingency effect in this. Oh, meaning like, if something's cast on it? There's like a... Meaning that the, uh, the effect is not hard to get rid of, but there's an effect behind the effect you can't get to while the first effect is there. And if anything happens to the first effect, the second effect it triggers, the... triggers and you think quite possibly destroys or annihilates whatever is within the gem. Okay, hey, actually, um, that's too, I can't actually remove that curse. That's a powerful. Well, you could. You couldn't do it Just without. Dying. Without, uh, no, you'd be fine. Gorthalax, something would happen to. Yeah, I can't. No? No. Is Gorthalax um, a devil or a demon? Uh, uh, Sandralin says a devil. Okay. Dang. Waffle? All right, girl. Galea says, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Wait, hang on, Galea. When were you in the, can you tell us about your work in the diplomatic corps? Well, again, I was a, a counselor, so I, I was not a full diplomat, you understand, mm -hmm. but I provided counsel to the diplomatic corps about the inner workings of different cultures and how best to respond and the customs and formalities of other nations beyond Falamel. I possessed an insight into the minds and hearts of other people that eludes high elves at certain times. Um, yes, we can be a little cold. Yes, and um, there was something, I suppose, to the empathy that I was able to wield on behalf of other people. Um, yeah, sort of a foggy memory at this point. I, uh, you know, I helped. I helped out. What? You know. Why what did do you, mean? you stop? Hmm. Why did you stop? Uh, he looks at the rupee in your hand, and he looks over at Sandra Lynn, and he's like, I don't know. You know, sometimes you hit a. Sort of inertia, right? It's like sometimes you just, you know, the wagon is stopped and the rest of the road is kind of uphill and it's not that much uphill, but no one's no one's pushing. Anyway, I'm Can I cast detect thoughts on Galea? Sure, if you want to cast detect thoughts on Galea, go Great. for it. Um, uh, you cast detect thoughts on him. He certainly fails. Great. Uh, um yeah. Cool. Uh, you see that his surface thoughts brim over with uh, memories of himself, you know, a little happier, a little bit more confident, uh, looking a little bit younger. Um, and uh, you see him tendering his resignation uh, in the diplomatic corps uh, to move and start a life with Sandra Lynn. Uh, she had a promising career as a ranger. Uh, he had met her while she was adventuring f as an egg fort adventurer. Sandra Lynn went to egg fort, mm -hmm. uh, met her, fell in love, and kind of gave up his life to go be with her in Solace. That's sweet, except it's weird that he was a grown man with a job who followed a high schooler back to Solace. No, sorry. At, she was not a high school student when she came. She was a oh, full, okay, was she close. went to <laughs> Eggport. Like, she wasn't like on her junior year abroad. No, no, she was a full-fledged adventurer. This was okay, back cool. in her days when she was like, had her nose pierced and was like a much, you know, she was sort of like a punk. And uh -huh. he was this like sort of young guy working as in like the diplomatic corps. Mm -hmm. uh, and he fell for her and moved to Solace. And uh, you see in his uh, sort of lost direction in his life. Um, D and D. Really sweet. How's it going, gang? Um, uh, uh, <laughs> do you think, Glear, that there's any reason that these uh, demons would want to hurt you? Did you have any run-ins with any demons before? 
I think Riz sort of established last time that they uh, they th they couldn't imagine that I was behaving so erratically in that combat and wasn't casting a spell of some kind. Mm -hmm. So they went for me first. I think they just the want to kill one. people. You're <laughs> the chosen one? He's absolutely not the chosen one. All right, I am going to go like I said I was. Uh, he heads off, uh, dinner concludes, you guys exit the restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, Sandra Lynn, after a few minutes, also sort of leaves and says, I don't know where Gorgug is. I'm gonna go check out for him real quick. Uh, um, she flies off. Uh, the rest of you go to the van. Um, you see Tracker speaks up and says, um, could we take the van maybe somewhere a little bit more secluded, if that makes sense? Okay, uh, babe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, also, it would be helpful if we could go get some, if we could get like extra blankets and stuff. Okay, babe. <laughs> I'm sorry, just, are, we, are you talking about sleeping in a van? Oh my God. What's wrong with sleeping in a van? Oh. I've always wanted to sleep in a van. This oh is actually my. very exciting right. for me. Okay. Let's do it. Hey, I'm in a van. I sleep in a van all the time. Hey, I hear you. This is going to be nice, hopefully. How's Rog doing? Uh, Rog looks messed up. He he's like being very quiet, but sort of sullen. Um, Gorga, you're several blocks away, and you hear mm -hmm. of this griffin landing behind you. Uh, oh, an enormous griffin! <laughs> uh, uh, you see, as you hold up your arm, Baxter starts to go for your arm, and Sandra goes, "No, no, 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 no!" <laughs> and pulls it up. She says, "Don't do that. He'll try to do it. His depth perception on the on entry is not." As good as it could be. I just uh, always thought it'd be cool to catch a falcon on your arm. He is the size of, like, <laughs> an ex like bigger than a Clydesdale. He's an enormous, enormous beast. I thought maybe he could flap while he was hanging on my arm. Uh, Gorga, what's up, bud? You kind of pieced out in the middle of the middle of dinner there. Is everything okay? Everything's fine. I just, um, I kind of screwed up things with Zelda a little bit. Uh, I forgot to tell her we were leaving with all the crazy stuff happening, and um, I feel <sighs> a little sad about that. Oh, I'm sorry, bud. That's, that's really hard. Well, you're a sweet, sweet boy, and I'm sure, even if her feelings are a little bit hurt, that, you know, she'll, I'm sure you guys can work it out, okay? Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I was just kind of wandering around. Um, I was fully lost. Thanks for finding. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad I could find you. Well, let's let's head back together. Um, uh, you guys swing back and you uh, pick up some, tracker. Picks up some blankets somewhere. You guys like stop by a little like you know convenience store. Um, you head out in the van. Uh, was there any business that people wanted to do before you knew we needed to go to the police station? Right. I just wanted to leave a note. Cool. Um, uh, I'm going to roll a luck check in front of the board. You guys want a high number. It's an 11. Um, cool. Uh, uh, school, you walk into the police station? Uh, I think I, I think I just leave a note. I think I pretend to be a citizen, um, but I disguise myself as, um, just a really nice woman. The same woman or a different? A very old woman. A very old woman. Cool. <laughs> So when you said just gonna, a very nice woman, you've been a his very old woman. You're going to end his career. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I found this on the front porch. <coughs> the porch, porch of the police club. <laughs> and then give them a little note. And the note is just um, to um, Commissioner Buggins. Mm -hmm. And it just says, sorry, I boarded away so abruptly. Um, here's my new number. <laughs> and then I go. Wow. Um, you see wow. that uh, the, wow. the attendant looks at it and says, uh, you found this note on your porch or our porch? <laughs> Yours. Ours. Yours. Anyways. <laughs> Detective Decker left a written note changing her phone number on the steps of the police precinct? <laughs> This well, if like your numbers change, I can't get into. I've got to walk my dog. No, no, we're in this now. Wait, hang on a second. I'm interested. Uh -huh. uh, hold on. Okay. So her number's different, but she only wanted to tell the commissioner. Are we watching this? No, we're not no there. the thing has just gone off on her own to do this. 
Just yeah, it does seem strange. Yeah, yeah maybe the whoever did it probably was having a hard day. Well. Anyways, my dog is tied up outside. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well. If you did, all right. Did you see anyone leave this at your house? Oh, no, it was at your house. And also, I'm not going to... They left the this at my house! <laughs> your police house. The police house? Yes. You mean the precinct? Yes. Okay. Oh, I got it. Well, we should take your information down. What's your name and address? Hilda. Hilda? Great. You got a last name, Hilda? Hilda. Hilda, Hilda? Oh, man. Great. What's your address, Miss Hilda? <laughs> 22 Hilda. 22 Hilda? Okay, is that Boulevard or Street? We got two in Bastion City. But you have two houses. Your name's Hilda Hilda, and you live at 22 Hilda Street and 22 Hilda Boulevard. Which address was the note left on? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, the police house. I forgot. Thank you so much. Great. Well, Miss Hilda, we'll be in touch if anything oh. else comes up. Okay? I use prestidigitation to make a loud uh, dog barking sound outside. <laughs> oh, sounds like your dog's <laughs> fitting, <laughs> fitting to get moving. One well, loud yeah. bark. Thank you so much for passing by uh, in the middle of the night. Wait, that dog goes on a long walk. We're pretty far from 22 Hilda Street, and we're across town from 22 Hilda Boulevard, so that's pretty wild. It's the size of a Clydesdale. Oh, that's a big dog for sure. Well, this all checks out. I'm going to update Detective Decker's information right now in our police database. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. I, I think that was a personal note. That's only for... Uh, one person to read. Oh, she left a personal note for one person on the steps of the police precinct? <laughs> well, you know what? That sounds like Detective Decker to me. Well, this all checks out, and thank you so much for being so helpful. Okay, I'm gonna leave and then come back in as Detective <laughs> <laughs> What? No! <laughs> what are you this is crazy. Wait, where are we? We're nowhere else. I'm in the van. van. I'm gonna quick turn into Detective Decker and okay. then run by the window. <laughs> Just run by the window? Uh, okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Uh, you see, you see that the older, like, uh, uh, sort of like receptionist police officer sees you run by and goes, Detective Decker, and vaults over the desk and begins to sprint down the street after you. Detective Decker! I keep sprinting. Detective Decker, wait! Wait, Detective Decker! I get on my skateboard! <laughs> uh, hold on one second. What? Uh, okay. Go on, uh, get on your skateboard. I botched this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to cross out Runt's Buggins. That's one of my <laughs> love interests. I botched this. <laughs> oh. oh. Uh, uh, well, uh, miraculous, incredible. Um, back to I just Dr. never Asha know what angle you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, totally. Like running back. I run by the window. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> I it would be like, just establishes oh, okay, it that was. she's like oh, in town. That she's dropping notes. Yes. That <laughs> she's, I get it. I you're see the vision. You're gonna get this woman fired. You're, oh my God. you're ruining lives. Look, I crossed out <laughs> Runs Buggins. Okay. You know you, you could have gone and asked her and said, "Can you make sure?" I, I don't know how crossing it out is any better. <laughs> I crossed cool. it out. Okay. You I head out. Uh, about you're on the way back to the van where everybody else is. Uh, as you're on your way, you get a little blip on your uh, on your cell phone saying, um, Decker, this is Runtz. Is this your new number? You're texting me on your old number saying it's not your new number, <laughs> but the front desk just said you dropped this note off. Is this some kind of prank? I throw my phone into the river. <laughs> I know! Uh... You throw your phone in the river. As you throw your phone in the river, about a minute later, you begin to hear police choppers. <laughs> and you see spotlights on the river where your phone is located. Uh, you look back in the distance and you see cruisers pull up. Uh, and you see that Chief Buggins comes out, says, looks and sees someone say, phone's at the bottom of the river. And you see him drop to his knees and go, no! He did love me. <laughs> oh, I skateboard God. away. I skateboard away. A horrifying short film. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Fig? We bought blankets. <laughs> cool. I think I'm actually going to go to bed like right now. <laughs> <laughs> I take Gorthalax and I cuddle in fetal position and go to sleep. I think, well, I just think on that, 
This is such a scary curse I know. on this gem. I do think we should, and myself included, always saying I'm Teddy Geiger, keep our lies to a minimum. Yeah. Oh, I completely forgot. But right, because you were saying lies. that they're being used against yeah, I, us. I don't know Maybe. if it was just a, a one attack on me to be creepy, or if. Yeah, we should. Baron was actually Because I am wondering, lost. we definitely can't have a character named Teddy Geiger come after me, because we'll get sued. Yeah. But, uh, you know. <laughs> we'll get sued. What nothing. Is that a real thing? <laughs> that, that's a real person. But as, oh, someone, <laughs> as someone who operates in shadows and deceit, I can't exactly turn my back on lies. Interesting. I, be, I feel like it's more like a win, choosing more carefully when we lie and how we lie. Just maybe not being so like casual. Maybe about making up people actually is been a problem. Decker. Like high, high, whatever I'm maybe sure shenanigans my, you got up while I'm, we were. I'm sure my daughter wouldn't have come up with a lie frivolously <laughs> for next to no reason. Fig, what, uh, what aim of the quest were you advancing with your deception? I don't know, what aim were you advancing? <laughs> hmm? Honestly, good I have only ever tried my best to help and failed incredibly, so I have. <laughs> I am not going to sit here and defend myself. It's the I, last I'm wondering, thing. do you think do do these this like bag of gems? Does it look like those people will be coming after it, or that there's a way to like track them? Hard to say. Why don't we, we just, make sure we take shifts? Um, uh, at, just in case that people have crazy nightmares. Uh, tracker looks at yeah. you guys and says, "Oh um, yeah." Uh, well, uh, if everybody wants to back away from the van a little bit, I'm going to try something that hopefully will um, maybe... Babe! Get... What? I'm not even doing anything <laughs> flirty right now. Oh, sorry. I misread all of that. No, sorry. What are okay. you doing in the van? What? I guess I have to wait and find out. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. Um, Riz takes another lap. <laughs> Everyone's insane. Um, <laughs> Me and Riz are just like, yeah. really <laughs> talking about the book, but in a way that's so intense that we can't <laughs> fucking pay attention to anything else that's happening. Oh, you meant you and Rog, okay. No, yeah. I'm gonna try to do something to... Protect this. I'll just tell you what my plan band. is. Uh, Sorry, I'm, yeah. gonna uh, I'm gonna try to turn the van into a moon haven. Um, normally it wouldn't work on something that's like purely mechanical, you know what I mean? But like mm -hmm. because there's the celestial that's mm -hmm. like in the van now, it felt like maybe there's a shot that it would work. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk to yeah. the van a little bit just sure. to see? Moonhaven is um, a place where moons hang out? Uh, no, well, good guess. Uh, a moonhaven is a place that... Um, <laughs> Well, it can comfortably fit a lot of people, and if I burn a little bit more spell energy, I can create a magic circle within it that should be able to like repel like fey or like dream entities and stuff like that. Cool. So I can only do it up to about like nine people. So we would so like Baxter couldn't fit, and we'd have to have some people find a way to like stay outside of the uh, outside of the van, but it would be a safe place to sleep. And if mm -hmm. we did it right, I think it would stop. Well, I don't need to sleep. Uh, Sandra Lynn looks over and says, I'm, me and Galir don't either. Great, so we can stay outside. I worry about Galir, but okay. I do um, too. I'll go talk to the van then. Cool. Um, uh, you walk over. Uh, and start to, uh, you, uh, so you're, the van is like parked. You guys are near a little copse of trees. You're kind of like near a roundabout, like where the highways that sort of circle the larger city are. And there's like a little copse of trees and a small field. There's like a dust little turn off from the highway. One of those places that's just like a forgotten little stowaway of a larger industrial place where nature has kind of started to come back a little bit. Um, and the van is parked over there, sort of rusty old van. Uh, as you approach uh, and turn the van back on, the boom, see it gleams sort of blue a little bit. Um, and you see, uh, as the van glows blue, uh, you hear the voice come over and say, Oh, what's up, poor guy? Hey, van. Um, how you doing? I'm doing honestly so good right now. I've been trying, and I think that the systems that your folks put in place in the van 
um, keep the driving and stuff separate from the main like CPU. Um, so I don't think I can, can actually control the like steering and the gas or brake or whatever. Oh. But like the radio, the AC, all of the vans, like other stuff, we should be honestly good to go. That's um, awesome. <laughs> yeah. And if you like wanted to tinker around with the van or whatever to try to like reconnect some of the stuff, I bet we could do that. That's awesome. I, I think I definitely want to do that. Um, long term, I might have to like call my parents to get them to help me go through some of those steps. I'm, I guess I'm okay at it. I would never say I'm like um, kind of a master of that sort of thing, but I'll give you a shot. Oh, um, but I was just coming in here. Um, most, I, well, I had two things. Uh, the first thing, I, uh, we were trying to figure out how to do a moon haven in here. And we were just, just want to run by, that by you and see if that was cool and see if maybe we could do it because of your celestial energy. And also, have you ever beefed it in a relationship real hard? I tell you, dude, I sure did. Relationships are super hard. I was a planetar of the plane of Elysium. My purview was harmony, relaxation, being in tune with just the chill forces of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. And there was another planetar that I loved very deeply and they were sort of my superior and they had set a clarion trumpet call for us to embark on a crusade against the forces of fiends and evil. And I just got deep in a nap and I just didn't show up. Mm. Cool. Yeah. And I, was, and I was cast out from paradise, sure. so, you know. <coughs> I feel it's similar, like I didn't take a nap I don't think I took a nap, mm -hmm. but yeah, my, I feel like my my planetar is all mad at me because of uh, me. I forgot to check back in. Totally. And I get it, but um, uh, yeah, but would that um, would it be cool if we did the moon haven? Yeah, I'll, absolutely. If you want to do some magic, I can like help like maybe elongate the duration or funnel some celestial energy into it. Honestly, look, I'm not about confrontation and I'm not about violence, but this van should be a safe place. And I am comfortable if like demons or spirits try to come in here and be like harsh in the van to be like, dude, with only love, like, that's not this space, you know? Mm, cool. You know what, I'll give it a shot. Let me tinker around in here. Uh, can I try to, to, to yeah. tinker in some uh, way? Give me just a flat uh, intelligence check. We'll say that there is some modest improvement on a 15, and on a 20 or higher, you can like attach the celestial to the driving column. Okay. You have a minus one to intelligence. Mm -hmm. That's a nine. Nine? Maybe you want some help with this. Cool. Uh, you guys see Gorga kind of banging around under the hood. Yeah. Um, some other time I can give you some inspiration. Uh, <laughs> lovely. Um, uh, so you see, uh, Gorga, you sort of don't fix it in time. Um, and the van says, dude, honestly, I think that's an A for effort, my man. But let's give this a shot another time. Maybe we'll keep an eye out for some tools or a garage, because I bet this would be easier to do if we had the full rack of gear, you yeah. know? Yeah, I don't have any. I'm just sort of grabbing pipes with my hands, so it might be a good idea. Hey, man, at least you got hands, dude. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find you some hands. Oh, what? Look out. Here yeah. comes the van with hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's terrifying, it like instead of wheels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, four hands just no, thank you. crawling. I guess I go back to the group. Like a girl. <laughs> cool. Um, uh, you see, uh, Tracker says, uh, cool, I'm going to give something a shot. Um, she steps forward, um, uh, kneels down, 
Um, right. <laughs> Sorry, this is a bad joke. <laughs> uh, she kneels down. Uh, the clouds part overhead, and the crescent moon shines down on Tracker. You see that as she prays, white spectral energy spirals around her, and a pure ghostly white wolf moves out of her, and you can see her projecting her own soul out of her body. The wolf grabs the pile of blankets in its mouth, picks them up, and they sort of trails of sparkling energy with almost, it's, it's like, not liquid, it's like a smoke, but it does flow down out of the wolf's mouth. Put that down. Put it down. The wolf bounds off towards the van. <laughs> um, and you see that the uh, wolf jumps with the blankets into the van and begins to like throw the blankets over the seats and up onto the sides of things. And there's some cushions that it throws around. And you see that the wolf, this like, spirit wolf, starts digging in the van. And you see that it's creating like an extra dimensional space, like a wolf burrow inside of the van, so that there's like a place to squeeze through blankets and pop down into like a little bed area. It's basically this like nest of blankets and different like, uh, uh, almost like a spectral extra dimensional pillow fort crammed into the back seats of this van. Um, Sick. And you see that runes surround the van in, some, in a magic circle, uh, and uh, the van glows with this, like light of the moon, this bright celestial energy. The wolf returns, slowly leaps over the field and back into Tracker's chest, and she stands up and says, all right, should be good to go. If we want to go talk in there, it should be safe. That was so cool. Is that, that your soul? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Day dope. after day, I just get more and more impressed. <laughs> Stop. I just, I wrote you this note while we were at dinner. <laughs> she goes, while we're at dinner, she opens it. What does the note say? Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, um, uh, she writes something in it real quick. Uh, and you see it's just the word when. Uh, <laughs> you see. I just, uh, I can't. Uh, cool. <laughs> Um, All right, shall oh, we man. talk in the van? Yeah, let's <laughs> um, you guys walk into the van. It looks like a combination of like, a, sort of like a Leoman's tiny hut spell mm. and like a magic circle spell have been cast here in the van. Mm -hmm. uh, Can I smoke in here? Yeah, that should be totally fine. Okay. Uh, you Actually, see I would prefer if you didn't I smoke. would prefer if you didn't. Um, Can I press the digitation so it looks like nothing's coming out of my... Or <laughs> is just next to you. <laughs> So, you see, so Sandra Lynn says, just uh, lifting that unburning clove to your mouth over and over again while we all smell and uh, can feel smoke. Maybe it's psychosomatic, but it's this making me cough. It's just small room. <laughs> you see, all the pillows are smelling like smoke. Uh, are we going to be, we're going to be sleeping in here Absolutely all the time? Nice place to smoke. <laughs> you guys, A magic wolf just made this for us and you're smoking in it? Uh, so you guys all squeeze into the van. Uh, the hangman is outside going, under no circumstances will I enter. No, but well, of course you won't, all right? I mean, you, honestly, uh, hangman, you have the most important job, all right? You get to keep watch. And if anything comes anywhere near us, I want you to ram the van as hard as you possibly can. Sire, if a drifter or some young teen walking from a gas station Holding right. on to a little portable okay. plastic canister. Right. Dares to walk by. I will destroy this van. <laughs> hey, I will sunder it. Hey, I will use your judgment. Not. You can use your judgment. I will send this okay. van straight to teens the bottom are, of the Teens are pit. okay. No, I mean, it's more like teens are cool and uh, drifters, I guess, are sometimes cool. Uh, we're talking more like <laughs> demons, like, you know, like the big ape men and uh, like the vulture guys, um, like red dudes were on fire. Normal, like, just kind of like people having a hard time, they can stroll by. But if you see those other guys, you smash I will this van of soy. Hangman, did you just eat a bunch of cheese? 
Maybe I'm some feeling meats. pretty lonely. All right, hey, <laughs> my van, my my vehicle is allowed to eat. All right, if he wants to chew, he's more than welcome to. I, he consumes gasoline or souls or whatever he runs on, however he damn pleases. You uh, leave the hangman outside. You see that Baxter, the Griffin, um, does that lanky kind of cat lying down on the roof of the van and just kind of goes to sleep on top yeah. of it. Uh, Can I give uh, Rog the teddy bear of helpfulness to hold? He takes the teddy bear of helpfulness. He's got his little magical spoon from Adine. Oh. He looks at you and says, okay, um, this is honestly messed up. And I'm really sorry that I didn't tell the truth. And it's messed up. I'm sorry. It's fine. Some of us made, we all made mistakes today. Let's just chalk it up to a bad day. I see that lady in the photo. Um, see the lady in the photo. He looks over at Tracker and says, nothing can get to me right now or hear me, right? Um, you see, she says, hear you. Are you worried about saying something? And he's like, yeah. Uh, okay, why don't I, why don't you think it? And I'm gonna cast a spell on it, on you, and I'm gonna, oh, actually, I can just uh, message you. I'll, I'll message you, and then you can message me back. And then you can message it to and each of us? Everybody else. I, have, I also have message. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> Rog imparts to you mm -hmm. that on the night of the prom apocalypse, Mm-hmm. He saw this person. What? Uh, being relayed to Adine and then to the rest of the group, Rog mentally says without having to physically say, so after the fight, I was pretty amped. Um, you know, it was a lot of emotions. Like, I had my whole toxic thing with, like, Dane, and I had kind of... Like after a lot of talking to Jawbone, I'd kind of like relapsed into like a lot of self-loathing stuff. And uh, then you guys were so awesome and Gorgug I knew we had like a moment that like meant a lot to me. Um, and then we fought Calvaxis. And afterwards I was just kind of pumped and I was we were in the school. Um, and I went and I saw um, there was this conversation and I was going because like a lot of the teachers had been like trapped in the crystals and had come out again mm -hmm. um and like I saw Jace the sorcery teacher mm -hmm. uh talking to um this woman that I didn't like recognize um she was like an elven woman she was wearing like sort of like black dark robes it looked like they were very like light um she was blonde, she had glasses. Um, she looked like this. She looked like you? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Yeah, she looked like, a, she, yeah, she looked like you. Um, uh, but like older, she didn't look like. Right. Um, you know, I mean, Elle's never looked that old, but she did, looked like, you know, not a, a high schooler. Um, Jason and them were talking, and they were talking to somebody else who I couldn't see. I just assumed somebody was like invisible. Um, later, um, Jace and Porter came and talked to me, um, and uh, Porter. I don't relay that Porter was involved in this. Cool. I'm, a, I'm eavesdropping via message. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's like. Um, Porter, I was like still somewhat injured after the fight um, with Calvaxis, and Porter, I, was, I didn't feel that injured, honestly, but uh, they did some healing on me, not Jace, Porter did some like uh, uh, barbarian healing stuff with me, mm -hmm. um, and uh, after that, I was like walking home, and I saw this, Catwoman, this like tabaxi, and she came up and told me all this stuff about my mom. And she said if I ever talked to anyone about it, she would kill my mom. Oh my goodness. What about? Do you feel comfortable telling us about your mom? Um, my mom 
uh, fucking slaps. Uh, she's hardcore as hell. Um, she's a uh, half work like me, um, which means that my dad, wherever he is, was probably a half work too. Or he could have been a human at work, and I just like you know. But mm -hmm. um, um, her name's Lydia. Um, she was uh, an adventurer, and she was a barbarian like me. Um, and they were out on this mission in the Red Wastes, and um, there were these like soul gems, honestly kind of a lot like the one in the van, and um, there was- Like this one? She, you see that Rod looks at it and nods, and you see he says, um, but this one was uh, like fractured, and the thing in it was like leaking out, and was like gonna escape, and she basically took it, um, and plunged it deep into her heart so that it couldn't escape. Um, Your mom did? Yeah. Um, what does that do? Well, she didn't die. Um, she's just like sick, really. She's like really sick and she's been really sick for like a long time. Um, there's, you know, there's like they're figuring out stuff that they could do to try to remove it, um, but she like has turned down a lot of the experimental stuff because none of the people have ever been able to guarantee 100% that um, the threat wouldn't come back, and she's just basically like, I knew what I was doing when I did this. What did she say she was doing? Saving the world. She's a fucking hero. That's really cool, man. Do you know if she knew who specifically was trying to escape from that? Uh, it was some devil, I think. I'm not sure which one, but... Was um, it a devil or a demon? She always said devil, but I don't know that I'm super up on the difference between those two things. Yeah, I just learned that myself, <coughs> too. Okay. But you, you had a... You had a nightmare when everybody else had a nightmare, right? That was true? Yeah. But you can still see the shadow cat. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> what exactly did the shadow cat tell you? Yeah. She told me if I ever mentioned to anyone what I had seen about that elven woman, mm -hmm. that she would kill my mom. So Jace oh, is in on whatever, up. on something? Well, Jace is a high elf, and right? And Porter is as well. And who, do you think Porter that person was, was your yeah, sister or your mom? Yeah, Port is made of rock. He looks and says, I want to say... I think that might have been my mom, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't... Jason do Porter... Picture? Yeah, I was going to say... Um, he's like, he says, Jason Porter were super nice. I don't know. Like, the conversation I saw <coughs> having... Like, the reason I walked up to them was that it didn't look, like, secret. I don't know. Like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jason's I don't want to like get... an open guy. He yeah. seemed like nice. She could have just been speaking to them so that she could get to the office yeah. to take. Is there the a crown. picture? Do I have a picture on my crystal of my mom? Uh, yes, you do. Great. So I show that picture. To that's her. Okay. 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 Yep, so that's for sure my mom. Uh, Your mom. And you remember that faint teleportation that night, the residue that was at the house that would have been months gone if it had not been so recent. And your mom's in Solace now? Yes, she, she lives in Elmville. Cool. Um, it's just me and her, and like, I like to take care of her. That's cool, man. Does she who's taking care of her now? Um, the school. They, okay, they have okay. caretakers coming to take care of her. Cool. She was like, when I first started going to Egg Fort, I was really not about going on field missions, and she was basically like, that's like the end of your life. You're not gonna like stay in Elmville your whole life taking care of me, and so I was like, Wow, your That's mom rules. Cool. Yeah, yeah, your mom rules. She does slap, you're right. Does she ever? Rod just starts. <laughs> <laughs> you can cry, man. That's yeah, cool. it's fine to cry. Hey, do you think that she'd want to move into Mordred Manor with us? I think that there's a couple of extra spooky rooms. Yeah, the living room isn't taken anymore. <laughs> uh, you see, he looks and says, uh, yeah, I mean, like, w like, is the rent good there? We were actually, like, really... We like have a second mortgage on the house, so like it you, gotta be no in, you gotta move There's in. You gotta move in with us. Yeah, There's you gotta. He's fully crying. Yeah. <laughs> rules about nighttime partners for teens. 
But <laughs> other than that, no <clears throat> rent. I was no such a dick them. to you guys. You guys are so nice to me these days. Yeah, dude. You're the best, man. Yeah, you do have to be nice to Zane. Tight. Yeah, I'll be chill. Yeah. Zane was honestly very, like, mean to me when before he died. Right, I was yeah. wrong to speak ill of the dead. I feel like, no, I feel like both no, of you... No, it's totally cool. Honestly, it's so chill. issues that made you aggro in a way that was, like... Toxic to everyone, including yourself. Uh, fucking hurt people, hurt people, dude! Um, <laughs> it's true, uh, man. Rog, did... Did your... Does your mom ever lose control? Like, besides just regular barbarian rage? Like, from the well, she gem hasn't, that's inside her? She's medically been in, like, a prolonged state of rage for, like, years. Oh, wow. And she are, has and to stay are raging they putting her in that to protect her? Yeah, she's it's it's medically necessary, but she's it's not it's like it's not like when you rage in combat. It's just like right. she's like because part of rage is like you quicken your pulse, your like muscles grow. She's just like um, she's very sweet. She's honestly like you couldn't tell she's raging. She's like you know like she lost a lot of weight, like she's lost a lot of muscle mass. She's just sort of like like she can't walk. Like you know, can she sleep? Mm. She doesn't. She doesn't really like. She'll like go out for like a few minutes here or there. But she'd like. It's not like us. where like you're walking around for like the whole day, and right. then you get tired and go to sleep for a lot of hours at night. I wonder if she can't sleep mm. because if she sleeps, then the she'll be taking control out. of. Yeah. Perhaps. Hmm. Um. Okay. Yeah, sorry to unload all that stuff on you guys. No, <laughs> that was no, really helpful, helpful and brave. Big, yeah. Some good stuff. Yeah, better out than in. Okay, so we know your parents are involved. No, should we go mom. to Aylwin or should we try to find your parents? We can probably stop at, try to find out what's up with Gardy O'Brien maybe on the way to mm -hmm. Aylwin. Because it's all in the sea, right? Leviathan is definitely in the sea. I mean, definitely if we went down to the port, we could try to uh, hear, we could try to ask some people oh. about Guardi O'Brien. Hey, Fig, anyway. yeah. can you call Dr. Asha? Yes. And see if I they did know the, anything? I did the same move that I did tonight, but it phone? worked. I don't have my phone. <laughs> but you have Dr. Asha's number memorized, right? I'm assuming yeah. you can. Uh, it's a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra wow. Lane goes, ah, oh, sweetheart. Who is Dr. Asha? It's just a 40 year old doctor. I love middle aged men <laughs> <laughs> who work honest middle class jobs. Sweetie, a doctor is not a middle class. I was just going to say. He works in the emergency room. It's different. He's not a specialized doctor. <sighs> okay. Does he know that he's dating a minor? We're not dating. And there's nothing minor. <laughs> going on I, between us. <laughs> my daughter is a rich rock star and I have, I, I feel that I have lost complete control. As a mother, I feel I've lost complete control. Uh, you see that Galir goes, up top. Uh, and St. Angela says, I'm not gonna up top that Galir. And he's like, I, I whispered will. a fig. Uh -huh. We're gonna get them back together on this trip. I want, I want Galir to join. Jawbone in my mom. Yeah, that's a great plan. I would love that. He, you know, I think he's not good one on one, but mm -hmm. I think like joining a party. He I, can really I think he's not one. good one on one. Yeah, <laughs> but I think is he good with any a number? Compliment. We don't We're know. in a small van. Mm -hmm. Whenever a relationship with isn't working, add a third. <laughs> that's what I learned from wow, this binder really? that I found. <laughs> Should I add a third? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, cool. Definitely. Is there any business before you guys all go to bed that night? I just want to apologize to Gorthalax as privately as I can. Um, you apologize to Gorthalax. Um, you cannot hear a response, but you feel... You know, apology isn't about getting in. It's okay. It's about saying it because they deserve it. Um, you feel your warlock spell slot restored in your body. Oh. 
I think he's okay. He's in so there. Is there, he's in there. Is there any risk of that accidentally falling on your chest while you're sleeping and it sinking in and consuming you, or like I not to be, so. you know? Yeah, I would maybe too blunt. Wrap it up. I'm sorry. But did she have to cast a spell and shove it into her chest? She was her. The rest of her adventuring. Uh, Party bit it, and they had done the spell work already to like break okay. a lot of the curses on the on like the gem. Mm -hmm. So she was just kind of the last step. I think also not to be you know too much of a disservice to myself, but I think that half orc barbarian is going to have a lot more oomph to the thrust than a uh, bard. Okay, cool. Good. To I know. think I couldn't even if I tried. Um, you could. You see that the uh, inspiration. Uh, so you uh, cuddle up with the gem. Um, uh, you see that uh, Sandra Lynn uh, looks over at you, Adine, mm -hmm. and says, uh, well, Madam Oracle, you want to take first watch? Uh, I would love to take second watch so that I can get my long rest in and then I will have spell slot. Uh, you see that she says, oh, if you need to be doing rest, you we need you at your... But I only need four hours of trance. Well, unfortunately, sweetie, there's 11 of us and only nine can fit in the van. So uh, that's as Well, but I can trance outside the van because I don't need protection. From, okay, cause I, I'm sure. Going to sleep. You'll be outside the van. Maybe in that case, I'll get one more pair of eyes. No, you know what? That's fine. I'll, uh, you know, because I can, I can let someone else ride <coughs> and sleep in the I'm van. Sorry. That's fine. I'll keep watch. Um, Thanks. Uh, so snuggling up, uh, uh, you see that there really are like you know when you like the, the, the crease in between the back and the seat of a car seat, there are blankets in that, and if you push through, there are literally like little rooms made of folded blanket that are very like warm and swaddling. And there's like snacks in them and stuff like that. Cute. Um, uh, Tracker and you cuddle up in one. Uh, Riz, you're in there as well. Fabian, you find a little spot in there. Um, uh, uh, Gorgug, is there anything you do as your, uh, yeah, Rod, you see Rod get the to find a little space as well? Uh, I think Gorgug just kind of sleeps on the, like, across the front two seats, <laughs> like, uncomfortably. Cool. Just like, just like, in case I have to, like, uh, you know, it's like, he's like, likes his stuff too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, his man, like, like okay. sticking right into your cool. ribs. Um, give me a perception check. Uh, nine. Uh, the van's gonna give you advantage on that one. Nineteen. Um, you see the van is talking to you and going, um, dude, I'm sorry to interrupt. I know you're trying to catch some Z's, um, but check it out. Uh, I just found a setting in here, uh, that, like, waterproofs the van. Uh, and we can like, there's like, you see the van pops out a little gnomish, like single engine propeller, like a little water propeller on the back. What? So the van's a boat? Dude, amphibious mode unlocked, bro. Is I it... think we just found your last name. What's my last name? Boat. <laughs> <laughs> van boat. <laughs> toot toot, van boat on deck. <laughs> On deck. On deck, man. <laughs> uh, dude, check it. Uh, and you look down. Your phone is open to the text from Zelda. And for a flash, a little ellipsis comes up underneath the text. No. And then it goes away. Oh, man. Um. Okay, it's put my... Um, you hear a rumbling outside the window and you hear, <laughs> Coward! Bike! Stop! Master! We've got to get... Look, I hate this van. Yes, I know. If we're going to get girls onto or into vehicles... You saw if... that? Mm, I was listening in. <laughs> My my bike is very jealous. I was honestly going to say we shouldn't mention the fact that the van has an amphibious mode to him. He will be jealous. Uh, uh, you see that uh, uh, so the van says, says, hey, man, um, it's up to you, you know? 
in matters of the heart, the best thing you can do is just move with kindness and try to be true to yourself. Thanks, Van Boat. You got it. Um, you uh, see the last little scene in here is um, Fig, you're holding your gem there, and you see you're in like the very back seat and it's sort of moving along through the van. Uh, I don't begin to understand the extra dimensional spaces created by the blankets in this van. Hi. Uh, darling daughter. Yeah. How are you feeling now? I feel like I had one of the worst days I've had in a while. Mm. And I still feel like I'm the reason that we're all here. And I know I'm the reason that Gorthalax is here. And I'm the reason that you died. And I'm the reason that Riz almost died. And I'm also the reason that some innocent officer is probably going to get fired. What? But just ignore the last one. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't believe that someone, I, I can't believe that once I was like, okay, I'm going to like try to like connect with people more because I need to have a healthy relationship with someone instead of <sighs> tricking all these middle-aged men. And as soon as I do, I get absolutely taken for a ride and, and used, someone used my body and there's nothing I could do to have stopped it. Figaroth, there are dark forces at work in this world. But even when there's not, control is often an illusion. I can never stop anything from happening. And I think most people come to terms with that, and I think only because you and your friends are so exceptional do you feel such a pain around failure? Failure is an anomaly for heroes of your status, but it is still an inevitability. There will be times when you are not strong enough, and I don't wish for you to add further injury to yourself. But I just feel like everyone else resisted, and I was the weak one. I just feel like I let everyone down. Yeah, failure's inevitable, but like, I'd feel a lot more comfortable if we all failed together and it wasn't just me who failed. Darling, I love you very much. You succumbed to power of nightmare and were possessed for a short time. Your biological father a powerful prince of the Nine Hells failed once again to not get stuck in a rock. Okay, you don't need to cast aspersions on him. Just this is not the time and to I get a shot at him. And I failed to not get absolutely rocked in the dome by a gorilla demon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Galear. Failure is a part of life. Galear, listen yes. to me. You have a part to play yet. <laughs> what? I know, tour manager, it's on my lanyard. This is why you're the chosen one, because you're so innocent and simple. All right, you're, okay. Well, here's the thing. I care about you. Your mother and I do talk and we are worried. The middle-aged men and the tours, <laughs> <laughs> there just feels like a lot of lashing out and I wish, I don't know. If I'm being honest, I think what happened tonight with Oh, Commi wait. Commissioner <sighs> Buggins. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> never mind. I mean, I can't just breeze over that one. <laughs> I think that, I think that, uh, I uh, think that my imagination latched on to a fleeting moment I had with a police chief at a really respectable per, per, police station. <clears throat> And I think that I wanted to think about that instead of thinking about the fact that I got you killed and my dad trapped in a gem. So I might have leaned into the middle-aged um, thing a little more than I should have. 
Okay. Look, I'm I'm on it, okay? I'm try I'm I want to also have a healthy relationship with someone someday. And I know that you will. All right. I'm going to head off to one of these little blanket pockets because there's one that does have some transportable yogurt. <laughs> you know, yogurt on yeah. the go. I know. I have a You don't need a spoon, it's just a tube. I know because it's on the rider. Ah for you. <laughs> Very good, my daughter. <laughs> All right, and you see he toddles off. Um, uh, Adine, uh, mm -hmm. what are you up to outside of the van? Um, well, I see the boat, the van turn into a boat, and I get very paranoid and uh, cast water, water breathing as a ritual on uh, myself and everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, up to ten people, um, and then I'm. Uh, gonna just, I guess, camp out under the stars. Uh, you see that um, uh, without you even saying anything while you're studying, Sandra Lynn hops down off the van and literally builds a tent around you as you study. Oh, can you, how do, uh, I wanna, how do we, how do you do this? You're, how? you're doing a thing I can't do. It's okay if I'm doing a thing that you don't know how to do, but. Okay, or you could teach me. You want to know how to pitch a tent? Yeah. All right. Uh, and you see that Sandra Lynn uh, sort of walks you through uh, some ranger basics of, uh, of pitching a tent. Um, and you see that she leaves you with a little lantern afterwards and says, uh, don't stay up too late, huh? Oh, I won't. I'm going to go. I'm going to get my four hours. Great. I'll be up here on watch. You're good. And then, and then I can take over from you if you, if you want. Um, uh, cool. Um, I'm going to need Adine to give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, can Froggy help me with that? Or is that coming out of nowhere? So probably I not. think that's coming out of nowhere. A wisdom saving throw, eh? 16. Cool. Um, um, you finally finish your studying. Um, you turn off the little lantern. Uh, uh, what's Adine uh, doing to like snuggle down for the night? Where's Boggy? Where's her orb? Um, uh, I think Boggy is in the sleeping bag with me. Cute. Um, <laughs> like maybe I'm I'm using his. As little... he breathes, he gets so small and then <gasps> big again. <laughs> <laughs> He's like almost moving you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then the orb is probably right, like where I can touch it, just in case if I get woken up, I need to. Gotcha. Um, you're settling down to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, you're in a trance. Mm -hmm. The runes of your spell books going over and over in your mind, capturing the spell slots you need for your new day, for your new rest. Give me a perception check. Fifteen. You open your eyes to feel Boggy's breathing stop very suddenly. And you see his eyes go wide and shift into his something's happening that I'm not sure about expression. Can I see which way he's looking? Is he looking at a specific thing? Um, you turn to look in your little sleeping bag. Uh, there is something in the tent with you. Can I cast friends on it? Um, you do cast friends. Give me an arcana check real quick. Not nat 20. Um, casting friends right now mm -hmm. at this thing will uh, allow you momentarily to see its face with your elven dark vision. Mm -hmm. um, because right now you see that its face is obscured because it is humanoid, 
clothed, but you can't see in bright color right now, so you're not sure what color the clothes are. Mm -hmm. But there is something roughly your size uh, sitting with its knees to its chest with its hands or arms wrapped around its knees. But the fold of fabric is obscuring everything from the chest up, like the actual natural fold of the tent. If you turn to cast friends, you will be able to see this thing's face. Uh, give me an insight check very quickly. 11. If you see this thing's face, mm -hmm. something is going to happen to you. Mm. We have to sleep tonight. Oh. I'm so glad this isn't me. Oh my god. I'm fine. Like, I see the fridge. 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 I see the Okay, I say, uh, what are you doing in my tent? <laughs> there is no sign of movement or recognition from the being in response to that question. God damn it. Uh, guys! Hello, is anyone awake? Uh, you hear Sandra Lynn up on the van call out to you. Adine, everything okay? No. Uh, you see that uh, Adine, you hear her jump down, you look back and the thing is gone. Mm, there's something here. I saw something. I definitely saw something. Uh, uh, you see Sandra Lynn has an arrow in the bow immediately, is looking around. Um, you see that she, uh, yeah, she's like uh, looking around and says, okay, can you cast any detection spells? Anything to try to find it? Uh, yeah, I can cast, uh, God, I don't have any, sp I have so few spells left. I used all my spells today. Uh, is there any chance that it's like... I could, I could cast detect thoughts. Uh, she looks and says, if that, if you think that would help, you can. Do, but... do you think that would help? I don't... Okay, I'll cast Detect Thoughts. Um, uh, you detect, uh, give me a investigation check. Can I use Boggy this time? Yes, you can. DC is 20. <laughs> I rolled two 11s, which means I got an 18. Spell doesn't hit any thoughts, but you know that there's nothing thinking within, you know, like 30 feet or whatever of the van. Okay. Um. Ah. Uh, can I uh, look through Boggy's eyes and see anything using uh, his dark vision? Um, uh, you look through Boggy's eyes? Yeah, give me uh, another investigation check. Okay. Mm, no. Uh. 15. Um, Sandra Lynn looks at you and says, uh, you see that she whistles, Baxter takes off and starts circling around. Um, you see, uh, Sandra Lynn looks at you, give me an insight check. Okay. Eight. Sandra Lynn looks at you and says, okay, Baxter's looking for it right now. I'm looking for it. You cast a text off, there's nothing thinking here. Um, we can wake up everybody else in the van. Um, I'm just going to offer something to you right now. Mm -hmm. This is a really scary quest. Mm -hmm. Are you certain you saw something? I understand. I understand. If it, if it was there, it's gone right now, to the best of our knowledge. M maybe it would be best if you went into the van and maybe Galir can come out or we or Cathilda or somebody else. Okay? okay, yeah. I but I only need four hours and then I can come out. I know that I it'll be okay. It'll be okay. I will say for whatever Sandra Lynn is talking about, um, based on your perceptions and investigations and everything else like mm -hmm. that, uh, I don't know if Adine would be left with 
a conviction that there was definitely something in the tent with her. Um, she stewards you into the van where the protective moon haven that Tracker has created leaves a celestially powered little extra dimensional space. Uh, Boggy croaks comfortingly and uh, you're able to do your spells, not out on the hard earth, but in a soft little place of blankets. Um, you see that Cathilda comes out uh, and her trainer is on her way up to join Sandra Lynn. A moment later, you see Cathilda pops into your little room and says, mm -hmm. oh, Mistress Adeline, uh, you'll have to forgive me, but I noticed that you look a little bit uh, of a pallor on you while you walked in. So here's a nice glass of milk and here's a little tray of fresh baked cookies. When did you bake these? I mean, thank you, they look delicious. What I did is I jury rigged a little grill tray on top of the engine. So it heats up and you can bake cookies while we're driving. Cathilda. Oh, please. Hi, what kind of maid would I be if I couldn't bake some nice chocolate chip cookies on you the engine of a moving so van? much more than a maid. Not that I want to dismiss the job of maid as not being important because that is a life-saving job for a lot of people. It's You're essential. Great. <laughs> thank you very much, Master Fabian. My darling Adine, I do appreciate your kindness, and I am well aware that Master Fabian has some uh, uh, misconceptions about those of us in the <laughs> custodial professions. Uh, the truth is, before I was a maid, I lived a life that was uh, much richer in terms of glory and risk and adventure and everything like that and um, honestly can't say whether or not I am worse off for ha you know making cookies and cleaning up and things like that but at the end of the day somebody needs to clean and cook and all of that and I don't know I did a lot of more grand things in my youth and I don't know that they did anybody including myself much of any good but I do know that cookies do uh, she smiles uh, and says, also, just so you know, Captain Seacaster set my salary at an exorbitant rate. Oh, so good. I, I that am, does make me feel better. I'm not, this is not a bad gig for my me. My parents actually, uh, we did have unseen servants, but they made us do, a, or me do a lot of housework as like a character building. That's, you know, uh, you, you, have to, you have to be able to, to serve to know how to lead, that was like my parents' attitude to everything. Right, well that's certain, and there's a bit of wisdom in that to be sure, although mm -hmm. from what I've heard, your mother and father were... Um, not great? Not great. Mm. Well, I'll leave you to your cookies then, and have Thank a you. good trans lady. Um, and you see that she leaves you with milk and cookies. Um, and I have you, a little cry as she leaves. It's <laughs> just the sweetest thing. Um, and you hear her and Sandra Lynn. You haven't seen Sandra Lynn or Cathilda kind of hang out, you know, one to one. Mm -hmm. um, you hear a kind of pleasant humming conversation up there and realize that they seem to be getting along swimmingly up on the roof mm -hmm. of the van. Cute. Um, uh, the next morning arrives. You <laughs> all wake. Nobody in the van has to make any wisdom saving throws. Ah. No, nothing. Uh, it looks like Tracker's plan worked. Uh, wow. Well, we brought Tracker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that. definitely. Shucks, mm. thanks, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> Adine, you oh, came into the well. van in yeah. the middle of the night. Uh, um, I saw something, I think, in my tent. I don't know. I might have just been paranoid or something. What did no, it look like? I just, I didn't see its face, and what? it didn't move. And I, and I, and I tried to talk to it, and it didn't respond. But it was. I just, maybe I just freaked out. I don't know, hey, maybe it was add thing. on. Seriously, we're working with a, we're working with an entity that is shielding itself from detection. You are not, like, this right. is, this is a very logical conclusion that you jumped to. Yeah, anyway, I, I stuck some spells that maybe can help us. Did it have cat feet? Did it have cat feet? No. No. Hmm. Did I see its feet? No. Uh, you saw its hands. It had, you, again, you can't tell because your dark vision doesn't read color that well, but it mm -hmm. didn't have claws or paws. It had humanoid type, type hands. Honestly, its hands didn't look that threatening. They looked kind of dainty and sort of faint. How was dainty was were it they? Was it your mom? No, was it, was it Baron? No. I described Baron. Oh, <laughs> uh, the thing you saw was medium-sized, not small-sized. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh. 
Uh, is Baron growing by the day? I, mean, I feel like I would have. <laughs> Baron just growing. growing. Like, <laughs> um, can I talk to Rog? Yeah. It, Rog, it, what? Can you explain like what you uh, were you hanging out with your mom before, like the night before we left for this thing, or how? how what was she like the night before we took off on our big adventure? Um. Good. I mean, mostly good. You know, like. She was happy for me because I was probably going to have to, he gets a little choked up, he goes, I was probably going to have to repeat this year if nobody asked me on like an adventure. Oh, that's uh, crazy. But if our grades are good, um, then I can graduate probably. Um, Do you have security on your house? That cool, you probably don't need it. He says, "Oh, he's like, he's like, he's like, oh, you mean like, uh, uh, he's like, you mean like, like physical security? I mean like any kind of security. It sounds like, it sounds like. I think we're probably not talking. Professor we, Eggfort is looking after your mom right now. Yeah, no, she she was like an Professor adventure. Eggfort owes me a magical creature. Um, you see that uh, he looks and says, what? We were all, we're all messaging yeah. this conversation yeah. about his mom, right? Oh, yeah. probably. Um, Nothing. I just have a letter to send. <laughs> Strongly worded. Um, but yeah, so she wasn't asleep or anything. She was still like very much awake, like she always is. And uh, you see, he says, "Yeah, I mean, like she was, she was like, like awake, like talking and stuff." Cool. cool. Did she get worse after prom? No, not really. Okay. Cool. Cool. Is there any way that we could? Talk to her. Give her a give her a bell. Um, Talk to your mom. I don't want to tell her any of this stuff. That's fair. That's, uh, totally uh, fair. Well, I think we've got this boat. All right. Yeah. And yeah. We should go. Can I real quick? I just want to look. This is uh, a totally unnecessary, but I just want to look through that um, book that we found from the hotel and see if Goldenrod or KVX ever was there. Mm -hmm. You did not find. You guys rolled really high on that. You would have. I would have told you. Okay. Yeah. Never seen cool. Can I just do a detect magic as we're dr like heading off? Mm -hmm. um, are we gonna? Are we going to Leviathan? Is that our plan? Yes. Well, we're on our way to Falinel by way of Leviathan. Great. Yeah, I think that's so fine. as as we're driving, can I detect magic as a as a ritual on on this hotel book just to make sure that there isn't anything magically hidden? Sure. Uh, you don't spot any magic here. Okay. Um, can I? Ask you guys something on the way to um, mm -hmm. to the harbor. Totally. I've been feeling not feeling a little down, um, and I'm just wondering if um, when we get in the water, mm -hmm. um, if you guys would mind calling me Skipper. Yeah, man. Absolutely not. You, I'll definitely call, call you Skipper. Skipper. Yeah. Okay. Why? It doesn't have to be. It's just. Can kind I of, call you Skipper outside of the water as well? Yeah, it was just, it's, you hey, know. Hey, man, why have you been feeling down? What's well, up? Well, it's just like some stuff, you know, I, I'm just like kind of sad about uh, where I'm at with Zelda right now, and I think it'd make me feel better to be do you want us to Skipper. Do you want us to text yeah. Zelda and no. tell her that you didn't leave? I talked, I left her a message. Right, but like. You haven't heard from her since? Is she going to the Red Waste? I, I think. I think yeah. she, yeah. I think maybe her adventuring party is. Is that, wait, is that? That's, That's where, where rocks were. And they were doing yeah. a whole crystal thing. Yeah, I think that we should call, call, call Zelda. Do you want, can you do yeah. an unknown number call to her? Why That's not just one of us? Just, just call her, yeah. just give her a call I, straight from I'll call you. Her. I give her a voicemail, one call. of those things. Yeah, I'm really good at talking Absolutely to people. Absolutely not. Okay. What? <laughs> Give her another call. No. I'll get, I'll get, I, I can her, call her. No, no, she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to be tricked into talking. To it you. wouldn't be tricked. We would just call because we have this information about the Red West, Red West, the Red Waste. And it we is need West. To, uh, and we the what the Red Waste in the West. Maybe you call her and I'll just. Oh, but if we share that information, it could put Gore yeah. uh, Rog uh, at risk. Yeah. Uh, oh, what we could do is send her a letter and a using script. illusory script. Can we text with a losery script? Can we text with a losery script? Give me a DC 15 arcana check. Great. Can I give you the health action? Great. Can I give you bardic inspiration? Arcana? Yeah. Oh, I don't need it. I got a 19. 
Uh, you, yeah, you do, uh, one of your crystals has that little thing where you can, like, stylus draw, like, yes. fading things on mm -hmm. it. And as soon as you get that, you can apply the illusory script to it. Amazing. Uh, so can I, uh, text Zelda the information that we got about Rog's mom? Um, how do we feel about Zelda, though? She's, like, for sure... Zelda rules. I mean, obviously Zelda rules. Yes, but well, we all thought Goldenrod ruled. What are you talking about? I know, I'm about? not. I'm definitely not trying to right insinuate now? that she, but I just, it feels like her adventuring party, maybe something was going on. I, yes. I remember? I cannot, yeah, I cannot mm -hmm. help but agree with Adine in that Zelda is a perfectly capable uh, adventurer, and it feels like maybe we don't need to enter this realm of risk uh, for her benefit. Uh, uh, I don't yeah. want to, okay. You should call her if you want to talk to her about your relationship, but I guess we don't have to tell her all I think crazy that stuff. and separately we should maybe well, but if they're give them a heads up if they're going to get in danger. Yeah, and if they're investing yeah, investing something, they're something that's tangential I think it's to ours, share. we can help each other. I think it's good to share. We should. Yeah. I tell, just want maybe tell we, her to keep it a secret to herself. That's I'll what I was going to say. on a curve because if we are, then we should avoid them. But if we're not, then we should help them. And I, wow, come that on. Was we're not great. That was tragic. That was, so <laughs> that was tragic. Truly hey. the darkest thing that's been wow. said so far. <laughs> Can I smoke in here again? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're doing it anyway. I'm we not. can tell. Oh, all right. Oh, so I, I'll, I'll just start I driving. I Ray of Frost on. on Let's try. I'll just start driving. I guess Hellish Rebuke. Drive drive that sounds ocean. good, Skipper. Skipper, drive us into the ocean. <laughs> oh. Oh. I cast water breathing right. on us again. Um, so real, that we're all oh, safe. if we have water breathing on us, can I swim and retrieve my phone that I threw into it, the river? In the river, the police definitely already have that. If you you guys can take, uh, uh, yeah, you think that probably the phone would have been retrieved by the police at this point. We can buy you a new phone. We have so yes, much we're money. Rich. I just had some pictures on there. <laughs> well, oh, if, they're definitely dead. Wow. They're not there anymore. Uh, you see Sandra. Lynn just goes, God! And Galir goes, huh, yeah. yeah, this is another one right on the chin for old Galir. This is, it just hurts so much to have failed this profoundly. Um, you see that, um, uh, 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 you guys head off towards the water, baby, and you're on the hangman. Uh, uh, Sam's I'm not gonna call him Skipper. He's not a he's not a captain. He's never even sailed a boat before. Um, you see that my man um, is a boat. With boat uh, is a man. Um, man is a boat. Boat, boat is a man. Man is a boat. The boat is a man. The most like Jack Johnsony like oh, uh, yeah. just that's all the <laughs> thing. Oh, oh man. <laughs> um, you guys uh, head off. Make you banana van cakes. As, uh, as you all head off to the harbor, um, you see that Sandra Lynn actually does go. Uh, Sandra Lynn, Lee, uh, you see that uh, Sandra Lynn says, uh, talks with Tracker briefly, and Tracker is going to go fly up on um, Baxter. Cool. Uh, and Sandra Lynn is going to take a little trance. Uh, you guys head off. You guys approach the harbor. Um, you pull up, you see that the van looks at you, or it doesn't look, but the <laughs> headlights flash on, the radio plays, and on the radio it says, well, you know, uh, it's Bon Voyage time. Um, Hangman, uh, if you want to hop up on the rack, then we can set sail for clear blue seas and that good ocean living. Climb aboard, Hangman. <laughs> Hangman, it's your call. For this van, I would sooner drive into the sea and ride along the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> uh, make a persuasion check with advantage. Fifteen. <laughs> uh, okay, Hangman, look, we're going to Pirate Central. Isn't that like your thing? He's, mm -hmm. not a, he's a demon, not a pirate. I mean, he what looks... Oh, 19. 19. Hangman, this is what Bill Seacaster would have wanted. Uh, give me a persuasion with advantage. I think I have good persuasion. 24. Whoa! <laughs> so he says, Do you truly believe Captain Bill Seacaster would wish for me to strap myself to the top of this van. 
what you're you're making it sound bad, but what he would want for you is to taste the salt in the air and feel the wind in your pipes. I don't and know. I'm just sounding Fig is really I'm, good. I'm, oh, guys. do you want to be the captain? I mean, I, there's already skipper, so you know. No, the, you can be the captain. and I'll be the skipper. Isn't that the same it's thing? It's not really how a ship. I don't know. You know, I guess. It is. <sighs> no, I don't think we so. We can make up our own rules. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess. Fine. I'll. Uh, I guess I'll be first mate. You see, Ra goes, and I'll be king of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Hangman, captain, first. Mate. I need you. <laughs> the hangman looks at you and says, "For the new Captain Seacaster and the old." <laughs> and you see, he uh, like rides, hits the like hood of the van, goes up onto the roof, and gets tied up there. Uh, and you see that Baxter lands and puts like one claw around the hangman just to like hold it in place. Um, you see that uh, uh, hangman goes, "All right, everybody, pile in, all aboard." All right. Okay. Let's we're do sure this. that this is a, a sea ready. This vessel. Mm -hmm. I mean, I trust it's got a propeller. Springs. Not really. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys drive as you drive. You see uh, the yeah the uh, <laughs> van boat uh, begins to head into the harbor. It goes toot toot, and these just a big old gnomish pontoons inflate around the front and sides of the van. And you see it says, "Get ready for the spring break road trip of our lives, gang." Heck yeah. Nice. Adam, uh, can I grab something from your jacket of many things? Yeah, what do you want? I need a phone that's my same phone number. That is worth 10 gold pieces? It can be a cheap one. It's right. prepaid. Phone number. Uh, prepaid. Uh, I pull out <laughs> a full 1980s style brick phone. <laughs> cool, great, thanks. Uh -huh. Hey, um, can I look at that bag of gems again? Yeah, absolutely, have at it. Are there any gems in here that kind of look like the ruby that she stole from that jewelry spot? The only things you saw that were that large and flawlessly cut were the ones that have gone into the van here and the devil's heart is holding. That's, those were the only two. There's nothing that kind of looks like it. Uh, there are other nice gems, but all of them are quite small or are not as finely cut. But do they, they're all... Like when I did the identify spell, they're all components of, of the magical jar. They all have things trapped inside them. Uh, oh, yes, they all look to have magical things trapped inside them. Um, you see uh -huh. that Cathilda, by the way, comes like sort of the van is much larger for her, comes around. Uh, she apparently at some point bought little like plastic coconut drink holders and starts oh. passing out oh my God. little Can coconut. Can I make a perception Amazing. check on Cathilda? Make a what? Perception check. Sure. <laughs> it's Cathilda the new porter. I love Cathilda. Oh. A dirty, a dirty twenty. Can we trust her? The cookies. I want to know about the cookies she gave Adam last night. Uh, you glare at Cathilda as <laughs> she passes by. <laughs> um, she looks at you and says, "Oh, Mr. Fig, would you like a virgin daiquiri?" <laughs> Only if you take a sip first. <laughs> <laughs> you worried that I've poisoned your daiquiri? Do I need to be? I don't know. Maybe you lie so much that you're always worried other people are doing it. <laughs> Fig, she's a maid. She Slam can't lie. Slam down. That's not true. Maids aren't allowed to lie. It's in maid law or something. I don't know. I'm now, just... Fabian, you know that I made a joke about maid law <laughs> many years ago, and I've insisted ever since I made it that it's it's not true. I mean, it, it sounded very real. It feels like there would be a code that maids would follow. It's something that keeps made society oh, I together. I understand. Would you like a virgin daiquiri? Of course I want one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No thanks, I'm driving. In my, um, <laughs> on, in my on the subject of world religions, do I have anything that I can be reading about uh, demons? Oh, uh, and the planetar as well, maybe. Uh, yeah. ma go ahead and make a, a religion check for me. Interesting. Um, okay, it's so eleven. Um, you don't find uh, anything about planetars are a very powerful type of angel, second only to solars. They're just a powerful form of uh, of angel. Um, Question: How do you? This is such a. Um, uh, I feel like Riz, as soon as he sees like the open air and everybody chilling, is completely incapable of chilling and goes inside <laughs> and starts spiraling into conspiracy theories. How do you spell Guardy? 
Uh, G A R T H Y. Uh, H, huh? Mm -hmm. um, I immediately come out and <laughs> with uh, a bunch of like pins and papers put together and say, Garthy O'Brien, I thought it sounded weird like a fake name. You can spell night in there and I don't know what the other word is, but it's all mixed up. Uh... And night, Orby maybe? What is a night Orby? <gasps> Have you thought about it? A night Orby? It, I, I don't is know what the second word is. Is it O-B-R-I-E-N or O-B-R-I-A-N? E-N. Uh, Fabian jumps in the water <laughs> swimming. Uh, uh, just swimming in the beautiful sea. It's a beautiful day. You're swimming along. You're heading out. You can see the Silesian coast kind of fading behind can, you. Can I do a little something with the... The ball, come down. I'm going to get a, a gem. Uh, the night already ball? have people in it. Never mind. Do, are they night rope? No. Or a different spell? Because Bill and the other two adults watch a van full of children <laughs> unable to sit still or be happy and just kind of hold their heads. Night yorb. <laughs> night wow. yorb. That's what I have right now. You see that the night hangman on top robot. says, The night yorb. <laughs> what know you of the night yorb? <laughs> it might. Wait, is it the night yorb a thing, Adam? Man? Night yorb. Yorb. A oh, yorb. Fabian. I'm sorry. I can't forget the Y. Uh, you see that the, that the van goes, oh man, yeah, the night yorb is bad news. Wait, no. is, it a, is it actually a <laughs> thing or are you guys playing a joke? No, I would never joke about a being as terrifying <laughs> as the night yorb. Yorb? You can almost spell Galir. <laughs> this, oh, Fabian gets uh, out of here. <laughs> says, it. It. No. So how often in <laughs> sleuth stuff does almost making an anagram come up? <laughs> a lot? I have an idea. I, I would like to take all the gems. Is the bag like decorative and memorable that they were all in? Or is it just a bag? Uh, it's a lovely little velvet pouch. Nice okay, I want to take all the gems out and have you put it in something else. A sock. Uh, and then I want to cast like glyph of warding on this bag. Okay. With like exploding runes in it. Cool. So oh, just so in case someone, someone comes back. Steal it. Yeah. They'll take Kristen a shit ton of acidic that is genius. Damage. Yeah. So no one open this bag. And let's then I go around individually let's, to people and let's say, put it, this is a fake bag. Let's put it in the glove compartment. Cause that seems like a place that people would try to rob us. Yeah. Nice. Okay. okay. Wait, actually, I'm just gonna keep it on my person just in case, okay, that's you know, Gleer yeah, is always looking for yogurt. <laughs> so I put it, I put it in my squirrel. jacket. Um, okay, that's good. Uh, if we're ever running away from something, maybe I can accidentally drop it and they'll think that they got it back. That's good. Uh, you, as you were heading out to sea, mm -hmm. uh, music sort of playing, having a little fun, Fabian swimming out in the ocean, um, uh, you get a call on your crystal in the front seat from Zelda, returning oh. your call. I, uh, Captain or first mate, please take over. Uh, yeah, I'll, I definitely. I, I outrank you. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I uh, cannot. Uh, just tries to find whatever would amount to privacy on this. Cool. Uh, you could probably call, the only things on top of the van are the hangman and Baxter. Okay, I'll go up there. Um, so cool. y'all. <laughs> uh, the phone rings and um, you hear Zelda's voice. Um, hey, Gorga. Hey, um, did you uh, get my message? Uh, um, yeah, I got it. Um, uh, I just wanted to say how sorry I was because I, I don't really have a good excuse, but it just felt, I, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it was, like I said, I don't have an excuse, but yeah, how are you? I don't know, you know, I'm okay. Um, I, you know, spent last night over at Antiope's house with Katya, just kind of like hanging out or whatever, like played some crystal games and... Yeah, I don't know. Like, it just sucks. <laughs> this doesn't feel good. Um, um, well, I just, I just hope that you know that um, I would not never do something like that on purpose and I still really, you know, care about you and our relationship and, and it just um, I'm excited excited to see you when I get back and, and I hope your stuff is going well 
Yeah, I'm excited too. Like, I don't know. I I really, I really care about you a lot, and it just kind of like, I don't know, Gorgug. It just kind of like sucks because like. What do you mean you don't know? Look, I'm I'm so glad that Fig and Riz are okay. I, I know how stressful it is. And like if we're like gonna be like a couple, like a relationship, we're these kinds of things are always gonna come up. I mean this is like what an adventurer's life is. And I know that you were busy and like it makes me feel bad that I'm like even upset because obviously you were doing something heroic. But like you did like stop at the mall, right? You did like swing by to like get Cathilda. Like there were other things on your mind. It wasn't like you were just racing to get them. And it's just like, look, I just think sometimes you think that you're like awkward or whatever, or you think that like, like, you still think you're like this loser guy, but like you're a rock star, like literally a rock star. And you you play on the owl bears and you like literally save the world. And like, it's not crazy for me to worry that. I, I didn't think it was crazy that you were worried. I, I don't, I, you're right, I totally had the time to, to I, sh I should have called you, I should have texted you, or I should have seen you in person before I left. I, I mean, I know that, <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe I have some confidence issues I need to work on, but. Um, but I think it's like your confidence issues keep you from like, doing the, like, because you don't, like, realize how important you are to some people, you, like, end up hurting people. I don't know. I, uh, I, but I don't know, like, we can also, like, we can, like, uh, what, we can do what? We can talk about this more later. Did you hear me? It sounded like there was a weird noise there for a second. You see, she says, oh, I, uh, well, I, if you. Hey, we're, we're getting closer to, we are going to Fallonel right now. If you're, if you can hear me, I'm maybe okay. losing service right now. Can you talk, can you hear me? No, I can still hear you. Well, okay, but just give me a call tonight. Just give me. I, I will try to, I, I, I'm worried that we won't have service, but I, I will. Do well, you said you were going to get the generator, right? The generator? You said that you were going to get a thing so that we could call each other. I thought... <sighs> you said you were going to... Gorga, you said you were going to get a... Th oh. I can't... I can't... Oh. We're, bre we're breaking up. <laughs> oh, man. Hey. Oh. <sighs> what did you say? <laughs> oh, no. I'm trying to put Baxter on my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Giant claw on your forearm. Just sit up here for a while. <clears throat> Everything good up there on top of the van, hombre? I'm just gonna hang out up here. I think, uh, I think, um, you don't happen to have some kind of powerful generator in you, right? Um, I'm like generating, yeah, like, I have a power for source. For like, for, uh, for, for cell service, for, uh, so I can. Yeah. Like, really? Yeah. Can we, can we, can you turn it on? Sure, just like plug in like a cell tower and I can power that bad boy right up. Gorgo tries to make a cell tower. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and give me an intelligence roll with disadvantage. Oh, Hangman, can I borrow some pipes? Double 20s. Uh, oh, okay. 11. 
11 does not allow you to make a make cell, a cell phone, phone tower. tower. What was it? Can, can I maybe pull one? How expensive is a cell phone tower? Definitely tangled pieces. Yeah, you can say around tangled. It's or maybe exactly. like 10 different like components that I could pull out Slowly that then join together. Bolt, and... bolt, nut, a bolt. Uh, uh, <laughs> you guys head out to see. Wow. Oh, brutal. Gorga, just so you know, uh, I also kind of messed up a sure thing yesterday, too. What kind of sure thing were you talking about? Jesus. Like, we're talking about relationships. Yeah. Who? I don't know. I, I, that I can't really I kind of just grabbed Fig and, and <laughs> pulled you away. But I'm uh, pulling you away. I will also ask for uh, just in insight checks from the party. Can and uh, uh, Gorga, you can just give me a flat charisma check. Can I have Porgy help me? Um, yes, you can. I have bad insight. Can I give a help to... Uh, sure, yeah, you can give a help to Riz. Okay. 21. Just a I'll guard you. So you 22. Got, I also got a 21. Uh, what did you get, Riz? 22. Can 20 I do an insight if it's better than my charisma? You, I'm actually asking you for a charisma check. Oh. <laughs> What'd you get? Four. Four. What did Fabian get? Two. Two. Okay, so, and what did you get for your insight? Oh, I, I, I gave mine to, oh, I, got, I just got a nat 20, actually. Nat <laughs> 20, great. Uh, so, literally every single one of the bad kids can immediately tell what's just happened on the roof. You can, like, hear it, except Fabian, who assumes that everything is completely fine. Up Guys, there. this is going to be a great spring break. <laughs> <laughs> then I swan dive back into the ocean. <laughs> You guys gotta come swimming! See, Rog goes, Cannonball! We're going forward, aren't we? <laughs> Come back! <laughs> yeah, Come back! I, I, I sincerely place. can. You see that uh, uh, Sandra Lane goes, oh, god, dumbasses, and jumps up on uh, her griffin <laughs> and, like, picks them out of the ocean to be like, do you have any idea how bad it is to go drop overboard? Us, no, drop, on us, the... drop us, drop us! Uh, <laughs> I, I oh, have my oh, ice cream. I can't even do it. Pouch, my ice cream sandwich pouch. So totally. I think I take out an ice cream sandwich and give it to Gorgo. I'd be like, man, that sucks. Yeah, I, Thank you. Buggy. I don't Thank wanna you. like push you in a direction you're not ready for yet, but I put the drumsticks in his hand. I if, can't like, hold that anything, right now. If anything comes to you, because a lot of times these are the feelings that we mine that turn into gold. I guess um, lyrics wise, first things that come to my head are, yeah. I'm feeling really bad and my van is a boat. I'm feeling really <laughs> sad and my boat is a van. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good actually. Bad and my man. Okay, yeah. Nine great. Yorb is coming for us. <laughs> Nine Yorb! You see that the hangman goes, Speaking of the Nine Yorb! <laughs> Guys, don't talk about the Nine Yorb! Rob, stop pushing me on. Or is there a what van? Is there a song called Night by OAR? Oh, there? oh Night Arab Boy. Arab boy. <laughs> Where's the Y? <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy. Oh. Uh, okay. uh, you see that the, the van says, uh, <laughs> playing Night by Or. Honestly, this song is great. Yeah. Well, Sick is. I really wish the van would play a little more rock and roll. You, uh, if you guys have music, you can just play it straight from your phone. Oh, oh. Is that an aux cord? Is that? I don't do I think that consent? your phone. I don't think your yeah. phone. Yeah, has your phone specifically. I try yeah. to not get a brick phone. Anything. You put your brick phone in there. Um, it says, it says to add more minutes. Press start. <laughs> Riz, Riz puts on a really old This American Life. Going, this Salesian Life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this Salesian Life. life. Uh, you put on a very old This Salesian Life. This week, wondrous items. Who makes them and how are they created? Oh, this is so Hard no. <laughs> Hard no. I love this one. I put down the windows. It's like them. it's like they purposely look for a smaller and smaller story each episode. I don't want to hear two hours about the bassoon. This this week, cantrips. How do you cast them? <laughs> I loved the cantrip episode. Yeah, so I loved good. so much. You think that they're not spells just because they're Gorgon level zero spells. Gorgon puts his headphones on. Gorgon level up. Yeah. You guys, you see Galir yeah. says, this one I want to listen to, pushes the button. You see, he goes, this week on This Salesian Life, 50 feet of hemp rope. 
<laughs> Why do so many people seem to have this? <laughs> well, they have the rope, Galir. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you put, I like this. This sounds like a uh, nice, respectable middle-aged man. I could listen to this. Uh, Gorgug, you put your uh, you put your headphones on, uh, and Zelda's playlist comes on. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, you guys sail into the wide open ocean. Uh, I'm going to need somebody here to make a. Uh, I guess Gorgug is the one driving. So go ahead and make a flat wisdom check for me. Oh, you have Boggy. Um, hey, Gorgug, you. you got this. That means you have inspiration. How much do I have? A D8. D6. Oh, wow. Ooh. It's a D8 You don't now. add it unless you need it. Oh, okay. Big so with the here. help from Boggy, Gorgug takes the wheel. Uh, 16. Uh, 21. 21, awesome. Uh, you sail the van uh, over the wide open sea ex expertly. Um, uh, Sally Bra was a nice young lady. <laughs> we hail and go. Um, my man is a boat, my boat is a boat. Uh, I'm feeling sad. <laughs> uh, cool, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's see how many days you guys are at sea. Um, uh, you are at sea for two days. Um, uh, what I would like from you guys now is uh, who are the people um, that, uh, or is anyone planning on spending the night up on top of the van because only nine people can sleep at Can I do it, like, can I go on top of the van but sleep? Like, do it for the experience of how nice it would be? Yeah, can we take turns? If we're taking Basically, two days, all, we can all take turns All the kids can inside. stay inside, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. The and hireling then, should like, go on top of the van. But I'm saying I think it might be nice. Yeah, night night one, Fig, if you want to go there, you see your mom looks at you and says, I'll, why don't we spend a night on the van together? Yeah, this sounds her... great. Hey, uh, you trust Cathilda, right? Sweetheart. Yeah, yes. Can we give yes, her, like, less or guidance or Absolutely. anything? Yeah. If you're going to be on the top of the... Yeah, let's do it. Um, it, didn't, it didn't target oh, because... Sarah Lynn before. Is there something about... Oh, Mom, if I... Do I need to be in the van, or could I? Because I might need to sleep in the van. Uh, you see, she says, well, you do sleep, so if we're worried about that thing happening again, we can. Or, if you want, um, we could try to protect you up here. I, I think I don't want to put anything on you. I'll just go sleep in there. I just thought it would be nice to be under the stars, but ah. We can hang out and then go to sleep for a minute. It only okay. lasts for a minute. Um, yeah. Like cool. Uh, so the first night you guys are out there, and she's like, "If you want to hang out for a couple hours, and then, you know, yeah. you can maybe give them bardic inspiration if they're gonna mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sleep out here." Well, no, I, I'm not gonna sleep out here. I'll I just mean, hang out, enjoy the stars. For whoever has moves. to be out okay. here. I mean. mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you see, your mom looks at you. You spend this beautiful night on the stars, the night ocean. You're both like sit, you're like sitting on the roof of the van, feeling like the wobble of the sheet metal underneath you, but uh, also but like mostly pitched back with Baxter's enormous weight. So you, Baxter's become like a, a furry, feathery back sofa for you guys to hang against. I offer my mom a clove cigarette. She looks at you. I knew it. What the fuck, right? We're adventuring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? You're making out with old guys. Ah. Uh... Can we just smoke in silence and not talk about that? I'm working on it. I know you and Galir and definitely Gorthalax and probably Jawbone and every other adult in my life would advise me to stop doing that, and I'm working on it. It's a bad habit, right? You know something about that? <laughs> cigarettes. I'm talking about the cigarettes. Yeah, that's what I thought. You're a piece of work, kid. Well, you made me. Yeah, God, I guess I did. You're gonna be all right. It's um, it's hard. You know. Not even. There are so many fun mistakes, and. I think sometimes for me, the idea of living for centuries gets daunting. You know, you know, feeling of vertigo, right? Yeah. It's like because you can fall, you almost want, want to. Yeah. 
I think when you've got centuries staring you down, it's just this weight of, given enough years, aren't I going to fuck this up? And if so, maybe I should just get it out of the way. I don't know. I guess I don't have centuries, though. You might. Tieflings don't all live to be the same age. Some tieflings live hundreds of years. That fiendish blood in you is not human. It's not extra mortal. Mm -hmm. well, I keep a pretty healthy lifestyle. <sighs> yeah, real healthy. <laughs> all right. You wanted us to shut up, so let's shut up. She reaches into her ranger pack and takes out a flask of whiskey and hands it to you. I was going to be straight edge except for drugs, but okay. <laughs> if I'm doing it with my mom, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and, you guys, for drugs. <laughs> uh, and you guys hang out uh, uh, looking at the stars that night. Um, uh, I'm going to make some quick... Okay. I'll give her bardic inspiration if she's making like wisdom checks. Wisdom checks, cool. Great. That's good to know. Um, uh, uh, second night, uh, who all is... Uh, uh, the second night, you guys begin to see that it goes from sunny to overcast. Um, who's going to be out there on this starless night on the sort of on the black ocean? Um, I will just because with... with I have dark vision. Cool. I have dark vision as well. Um, you see that tr uh, uh, Tracker looks and says, um, no, tra actually, Tracker needs to get her spells back to be able to create the moon yeah. haven. Um, uh, cool. Um, so you uh, are going to go up there. Do you and Gorgog want to go up there that second night? Um, if we, do we need two people to go up there? Uh, yeah, because only nine can fit in okay. the van and sleep at the same time. Sandra Lynn says, I will say this, I love being outside overnight, but yeah. one night of trance on a soft thing would be great. Yeah, I also, I mean, I didn't use any spells the previous day, and so I can... Yeah. Do you guys want a healer up there with you? Because I wouldn't, I can do it too if you want. Okay. Um, three of us. Sure. Yeah, okay. Because okay. you guys could have presumably slept during the day. Yeah. Yeah, what are we going to... Well, but who knows if the night, my king... Cares about what yeah, time. About what time of night it is? It's yeah. just nightmares. It's not yeah. nightmares. Um, they have the ability to give us bardic inspiration. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think I, I would just as yeah. you guys were going up the spiral okay. staircase to the top, I would, I would give, give you all a little inspiration. Hey, I love this crow's nest up there. <laughs> uh, cool. Um, we all hold hands. Uh, lovely. Um, uh, Tracker's also going to cast a second level spell on Gorgug to give you advantage on wisdom saving throws. Um, nice. uh, cool. You guys go kick it on top of the thing. Um, looking... I'm going to whisper, uh, uh, Sandra Lynn left a flask of whiskey up there. So. Should... Okay, I can just also... Uh, should I give it back to her? <laughs> uh, I don't need to steal anybody else's whiskey. Okay, I cool. just trying to hook you guys up. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, look, I have it in my... Um, you guys look Does at know endless like black ocean. Um, less romantic than the starry skies that Fig and Sandra Lynn got to see. Uh, what do you guys, uh, as you sort of are up there before you're all going to sleep, what do you guys do up there on top of the... I think I'm like... Uh, I don't really have anything that I can kind of like cast. Um, everything's like a minute or something. You know? I'd, yeah. I'd like to think that Gorga would have asked you this earlier, mm -hmm. but uh, is there any way you can find a skipper's hat in that bag? Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> I think like, uh, I Gorg pull out like a, a head uh, scarf and, and put that sure, on. Sure, patch? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I pull out one that looks identical, but slightly shinier than the one that Fabian has. It doesn't have any powers. So it just cool. Looks cool. Um, I think Gorga's also trying to grab like driftwood and stuff so we can try to make a cell tower. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, we have a minute. Um, can I... Hang on. Uh, cause... You know what? I think I want to talk to you guys. Oh, sorry. Cast what you want. Well, yeah. yeah. Actually, Adine in real life, in, in game life, is looking through her spell books trying to find yep. us while you're on the roof. So, uh, yeah, you know what? Can I, can I conjure some minor elementals? Sure, you begin casting it. It takes a minute to cast. Um, I just wanted to say, and no one else can hear me, but I feel like they'll hear 
kind of like the vibe of what I'm saying. But mm -hmm. like, you know, Gorga, like we aren't gonna be good at our first relationships. Like I've messed up so many times with Tracker. You guys, in a, yeah, seem really good. Yeah, yeah, but it took a lot, you know? I mean, it's just like... You always talk about 69ing and stuff. You know? Yeah, and it took, you know, a long time to... At first, I wouldn't talk about it at all. And then I did a hard swing the other way. <laughs> Is it, I want this to count as an inspiring speech to give everyone yes. 10 hit <laughs> points. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Like the other day, it was like a playing card. <laughs> What's that? Just like a, you know, you ever see a playing card that has a head at the top and a head at the Yeah, back. that was us. Totally. I didn't um, mean to see that. Yeah, yeah it's we okay. did talk about you doing that in the van, and you did say that you weren't going to do it. And just because it's a boat doesn't mean that... I mean, listen, everyone, I didn't come up here to be shamed. I actually came up here to I'm release us all from that shame. Shaming you, I'm just, like, holding sure. you to your word. I just, look, it was a private <laughs> s'more Public. pouch. And... It's gonna get pretty inspiring soon. I'm pretty uh, don't worry, here comes the inspiring part, okay? We watched relationships, like, on TV, and we're like, I'm sure when I get there, I'm gonna nail it. Because mm -hmm. I've been obsessing about having someone to kiss for my whole life. And then you get there, and you're really bad at it. Yeah. And you just keep being bad at it. Is that a thing that you've been obsessed with your whole life? Yeah, having someone to love, definitely. Oh, right, yeah. What? <sighs> what? Oh, well, maybe not everyone, but me specifically always wanted it to happen, and uh, whew, it finally did, and Tracker has had other relationships, so she's got a lot more stuff figured out than me. There's still a lot of things that I'm really not good at. Like, did you know for her birthday, I got her, like, a toy? I got her, like... <laughs> Gotta, it's like this like fun car. putty that you can put on a newspaper. And then it comes <laughs> off and it, and it looks like the newspaper. Yeah, and her birthday was on our one year anniversary. So I thought, I just have um, to get one gift. It's gift. the same day. No, nobody likes a combo gift. And, but she didn't really like the putty. I just kind of yeah, still feel like maybe she's Did you get still, how it works? You put it right on the newspaper. You put it right on the newspaper. And it's like, you could throw that newspaper away, baby, because you, you got it permanently here. You got it here. newspaper. It's like, babe. But you'd have to read it in a mirror. What? What? Oh, the hangman! Oh, I'm up, I'm up here on the roof, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. You couldn't just read it right off the putty. You would, the, the, it would be backwards. You'd have to read it in a mirror. Yeah, yeah. totally. That putty rules. It's yeah, really thank good. Thank you so much. Can I much? see if I found enough driftwood to make a cell tower? <laughs> yeah, give me a roll disadvantage. Maybe some putty would help. Is this that? the Are You My Dad of the Season? <laughs> this funny. Oh, oh, hello. Intelligence? Oh, okay. Do you guys think there's any way you can let you do it without like a 30? Hey, 15. <laughs> you find uh, a uh, uh, coming out of Adine's jacket, uh, a pipe. And if you get a couple thousand more of these, you'll be in business, baby. <laughs> Let's get <this> started. <laughs> um, uh, Adine, you finished conjuring elementals. What kind of uh, elementals are you uh, summoning? Uh, I'm thinking, I mean, we're in the water, so is there like some kind of like a thunder lightning situation? Uh, yeah, you could do it. Sorry, like... I had a sheet and I can't find it. Oh, here it is. Right Everyone has. 11 temp hit points, by the way. Amazing. If you want to add that to cool. your sheets. Ooh. Um, Even me downstairs? Five yeah, I think it would count for the whole party, right? Five, I'll take inspiring it. speech? Or yes. Is it just anyone yes, yes, yes. It? You guys can all take that 11 temp Sorry. HP. Sorry, uh, this, this is not <clears throat> as useful as I thought it might be. Ah, poison fire. Uh, right. Probably the best thing you, you could do here would be like steam methods. Great. Yeah, let's do that. So you guys see cresting off of the sea foam. Uh, a group of four little skinny, they look impish with like, they have long pointed noses and long pointed chins and these little pointy ears, uh, impish, but they're made out of like sea foam and vapor, fly up and circle around Adine. Hi, can you keep watch for us please? <clears throat> Thank you so much. How do I make you look like cheerleaders? My sister was so good at this. <laughs> Looks like they're cheerleaders. Yeah. Oh, okay, we'll work on it. I think they're cuter this way. I'm not there. <laughs> so, have you not talked to your sister at all since No, she's in homecoming? prison, I think. I don't know. Yeah, but you can still definitely talk to people in prison. In Falinel? I don't know. Huh. Also, just to remind you, she's not a good person. I don't even know Ooh. if she would want to talk to me, honestly. 
Yeah, there. I just feel like once we get there, you're probably the one who's gonna have to go talk to her. Oh. Uh, as night falls, add on. You don't have to trance at all. You have these little methods that are flying around. Mm -hmm. um, you go. You see, they sort of circle around the van, going. <laughs> you know, we didn't have to make them cheerleaders. I wake though, up. You know, like, uh, <laughs> everyone's awake the whole night. What's all that clapping? <laughs> Who's clapping? Um, I'm gonna need wisdom saves from uh, Gorgug and Kristen and Adine. Mm. You may um, uh, roll with advantage, Gorgug. What about the Bardic Inspiration? And are we, whoever has Bardic Inspiration. I mean, I kind of gave, gave it to all of you. Yeah, yeah all you guys can, can add. Can I roll with advantage with Buggy? Uh, yes, you may. Yes. yes great. Woo. Definitely is that Bardic. Thank goodness. What well, is Bardic? An eight? Oh, yeah. Eight. An eight. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, tw uh, 22? 22, okay. Uh, not, uh, dirty 20. What's dirty 20. the DC? Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, I won't tell you the DC, but go ahead and tell me what you roll. Um, okay, I'm using human determination to, re to cool. roll with advantage on cool. this. Cool. Okay, good. Uh, this is a wisdom? Yeah, wisdom saving throw. Very cool. Okay, yeah, that's uh, 26. Oh, damn. Great. Um, uh, a, uh, a, a, an uneventful night passes. Um, okay. uh, the methods keep you all the way. Uh, I wish I could say that day comes the next day, oh. but it kind of doesn't. Mm -mm. Uh, th uh, not thick, but like drizzling rain, the kind of which is just enough to churn up the sea and create a dense, thick layer of fog comes over you. It is cold as you journey further south and east out uh, into the Celestine Sea. You can see fog rise up. Uh, and it's not super opaque. You could probably see like 60 to 100 feet out into it. But when you're used to seeing the horizon, 60 to 100 feet feels like you can't see anything at all, right? Um, uh, and you venture uh, out into the ocean. Um, as you guys uh, awaken, um, you see that the van comes on and says, all right, morning broskies and siskies. Uh, just wanted to give a holler, because um, I've been fiddly idly around with these uh, readers and odometers and whatnot, and looks like there's something on one of these doodads, like a radar or something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Oh, definitely. Like Let's turn yeah. that on. Whales and submarines. Oh, like sonar. I could probably do whale song. You're doing don't it. do it too good because we don't want a school of whales <laughs> attacking or the ship. Uh, oh, Fabian, give me a perception a check with advantage. Of whales. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go perception. Yeah. Ooh, mm. that's an eleven. Oh no, you get a. Uh, you rolled a seventeen. I rolled a sixteen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you look down into the water where it's clearer, um, and you see the water uh, churning with sharks. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, and you see that the sharks are all moving, uh, and you can see uh, cross waves. So like, uh, there is something causing the water to move, not only with the tide. Something is competing with the tide to create changes in the sea. A ghost ship. No, it, it, that would be incredible. But Night Yorb. Uh, uh, no. How many fucking times do I gotta say, speak not speak of the, the Night Yorb? Uh, I believe. We'll you see the van speaks up and goes, seriously, I am not an angry dude. You've gotta fucking stop with that <laughs> Night Yorb stuff, man. It's not a joke. Me and the hangman don't agree on a lot. You gotta can it with that Night Yorb stuff, man. <laughs> what is it? So we see rippling in the water like this. Us, Garth the O'Brien? I think we're approaching Leviathan. Uh, oh. I'd like to climb up on top of uh, the van. Fabian, you climb up on top of the van. You look up into the fog, and you guys begin to see that night is like setting again. 
And then you realize night is not setting again at all, towering over you in the fog is the darkness of a ship. But you see this ship is pushed up out of the water and it moves forward like it's not sinking. It's almost directly at a 90 degree ang ang uh, angle surging up out of the depths. And you see behind it is another ship and another a colossus of ships lashed and wrapped together, towering up into the sky. You hear the call of gulls, <coughs> the jangling of music. You hear cries and see the vastness of not just a ship nor a fleet, but a city sailing on the surface of the waves. You look front of you, and Fabian, you turn to look and see behind you it looms as well, each moving past you. Suddenly you realize you are surrounded on either side by the city, stuck in the middle of the sea as two, let's call them what they are, neighborhoods of shipwrecks hodgepodge and quilted together, move past you on either side and eclipse you as they move in the same direction. And you realize that the bulk of the city is not to your right nor to your left, but the bulk of the city is coming up behind in the pincher of these two arms that are swallowing you up. And as you turn to the third direction from whence these shapes are coming, you see approaching you white froth and something swallowing the ocean up. You hear laughter and lashes and you hear, <laughs> get ready me hearties. It looks like the city's hungry for another meal. And that's where we're going to stop this week. <laughs> no. Feels good. This week on Dimension 20 Live. Tune in next week as we meet Leviathan herself. Uh, also, uh, if you guys would like, uh, check out, uh, uh, we have many seasons of Dimension 20 that are available on dropout.tv. You can go check that out. We got a bunch of awesome merch. We got boggy shirts. We have this uh, from last week. Uh, romance partner shirt, <laughs> which you can have if you like. Uh, so uh, go check out our merch store where all this awesome stuff is. Uh, uh, and make sure to stay tuned next week when we continue the adventure of the bad kids. See you next time, intrepid heroes. Yeah. <laughs> oh.